Welcome to the Worst Enemies Podcast, featuring Hendershot and Rafe V. Marill. Hello, and welcome to the 67th installment of your favorite little web show. Hello. With me, as always, is, uh, is, is young Rath A.V. Marill. Young Viril Rath A.V. The V stands for Viril. V. Marill. Does it? <laughs> the only part of my name that doesn't stand for anything. Um... No, oh, welcome in everybody. I I'm just it... exhausted. I I had to put my whole setup together. Uh, that's why I was late. I literally had to put all the shit together. Oh yeah, we're early, so you're not late. <laughs> <laughs> this time, I have to pick up the kiddo at three, so uh, yeah, this was so... the only time. So, uh, right at the top of the show, I'm gonna say, if we keep trucking along like this. Episode 69 would be on the 8th. Now, I also have to take the kiddo to a dentist appointment on the 5th. I'm taking that day off. I'm just going to take it off. Uh, producer's not going to be here for the 8th, so I can't do what the fun thing I wanted to do was. So we're probably going to aim for Tuesday the 12th for episode 69. Uh, yeah. Sounds like a plan. So yeah. Yeah. That's the top of the show. Announcements are over. Do you have anything to talk about? <laughs> well, announcements are over. Uh, well, I got just there's so many parts on the show where we could easily just hit the end button and be like, well, that was all we had to say. What's this? Uh, we all have a very serious question for Rathay, do we? Do you? Are you guys hive minded? Do you have a collective thing to tell me? Oh yeah. Uh, is he try? I thought he was just wearing the red beanie because it's like slightly colder, isn't it? To me, it is. But uh, I like the beanie. I need a haircut. Um, so instead of just fucking with my hair all day, I put a put beanie, a beanie on. on. Yeah. So also, it's it it provides more padding. I had it on for the twelve hour stream yesterday, and it provides a lot of extra. These 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 slowly cut into your oh, ears. Oh yeah, yeah, without a doubt. So yeah, it's nice. Plus, it makes uh, everything a little bit quieter, and I don't have to oh. lower m my levels, and I can keep everything nice and yeah. loud for the show. That makes sense. Um, oh, I see. <laughs> I see what this question is. Because I saw the stuff in the literal landfill. What In the fantasy world, what weapon oh, yeah. would I want? Yeah. So, so there, were some, there, was, there was some postulation. Uh, you have that rapier wit, so why not, why not a rapier sword? Uh, I went with the bill hook. If you if you want time to think, uh, I immediately said bill hook because that's my favorite weapon. And if the bill hook, yeah, uh, I almost posted on that, and I almost said, hey, "Hey, everybody who's here, don't be fooled. That's not really a bill hook. It's actually a modified pen, in which Elliot puts all of his criticisms <laughs> down. <laughs> it is indeed mightier than the sword." <laughs> All of my criticisms. That's some big ass paper. I, I am filled. <laughs> I got a big ass paper for it. I am... Sorry about scribbling on napkins. That is one of my favorite things you've ever said. <laughs> well, it's just it was one of those moments where I was just like, given the outfit and the context, I was just like, this is what I want to say, but what I'm gonna say is nothing. Um, <laughs> you should have said it. That was fucking. Funny. I should have. But... <laughs> it's all of his massive criticisms just. <laughs> Just this is what he needs. He needs a pen big enough for this. I mean, a book would work. So, do you have what? What fantasy a weapon? A monster. What? F oh hell yeah! Get her on. Get her on. Capture her. G throw your ultra balls. Yeah. What? 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 What are you doing? Don't come closer. <gasps> <gasps> do I have both? Does she bring you tithings? <laughs> Uh, shit, uh, uh, can you get like a... Uh, has has uh, she like accepted a... your offering? The uh, the object in which you can place some... Yeah, that that thing, the plate. I couldn't remember uh, general utensils and shit. So, um, she's accepted your offerings and she brings you good tithings. Yeah, oh, she, brought a, she a, brought donuts. A bountiful um, harvest will have. A bountiful harvest. <laughs> uh, I think a book would work. I think that'd be the smartest... <laughs> A oh, book, you see, a book you see is the your shadow weapon. Oh, thank you. So, yes. is is your is your is your fantasy weapon a tome of spells? 
Yeah, but technically it's uh it's actually like my already pre-written criticisms. Oh. Like... <laughs> it's your it's it's your Necronomicon. Yeah, I I don't I don't know. Like if I was in a fantasy world, I I I don't know. I I thought for a long time I was just like, "Hey man, swords are cool, but as I get older, like an axe is a much more versatile weapon." That's what he guessed. He he was like a big broad axe, a big battle axe. That was his first guess. That's that's a pretty good guess. You know, it's also hilarious. My hair is like you guys gonna actually see like the cabinets open kind of through my hair, but my hair is a sensor right now. Um, There's so much layering because our sunshine is shining down upon you, but then also uh, your hair is masking. Oh, that's this this layers. That's I'm whatever. It's layers, but uh yeah. See, do you see that? You see that? Oh yeah. There's, there were arms. Oh shit! Shadow monster's arms. So shadow monster is bipedal. Holy yeah, shit! Yeah, but shadow monster is a bipedal being. I'm yes. sorry to disappoint everybody. Shit. Uh, she's laughing about it too. But <laughs> we're saying you have arms and two legs <laughs> that you stand upon. Oh, don't turn too far. Was thinking that maybe you'd be don't... some sort of beast. We might look upon her visage, visage. <laughs> no oh she's gone <laughs> <laughs> and so is the paprika uh, Viking axe so there's a the there's the axe that's a the precursor to the fireman's axe it's a naval axe mm -hmm. that's a strong second for me it's got uh especially if it's got like uh extra bits like on the pommel or something because yeah. that little that crow's beak that's good for getting through armor in that sp in, in a naval axe situation it's, it is meant for moving planks and mm -hmm. wood like in case there's a fire on board or after like cannon fire and that's it's, yeah. it was adopted for the fireman after that because it's got that nice move that that hook that lets you just get into shit and mm -hmm. a nice broad like not a super curved yeah it's more chopping but i don't know i i like <clears throat> there's a course like just the the generic like uh like the danish had it right when it came to just with the beard you know, with the bearded axe yes bearded axes yeah, that's um, pretty good. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'd be like a Nostock or a Cutlass person. So I would also give high like uh a crow's beak. Yeah, a crow's beak mm -hmm. with the four with the four pronged head on the front. Yeah. What about a lucerne? A lucerne? I'm gonna have to look that one up. It's it's basically the uh it's the it's the pole arm that's like a hammer with a spike on it. On both like the top and the back. Um Oh shit! Okay, but what one are we thinking about? Because there's so many. Like when I type it, oh god, that's fine. <laughs> Water cam. Um, like uh, there's a uh, the one that has Is like all the the one with the tenderizer. Uh no, it's it's more like a. I guess it would be like that. Although that looks yeah, like that. Oh, it's just, there's just like a basic it's yeah. Just an extended crow's beak. That's pretty sweet. But with a hammer side to it. It's just that's all it is. So I'm not um, seeing a bill hook. Oh, naginatas are cool too. Like oh, literally, yeah. just put just put a kat katana on a five foot, six foot long pole. I was like the as shit. I was like the scimitar, the Guan Yu extended. Mm -hmm. with it. It's got to have a dragon mouth for just no reason ever. Yeah, because you know it it makes it so there's stronger. That's close to my bill, my idea of a bill hook, but uh, I like the one with the with the extra bits because. There. Why would you only have the one thing? Oh, hey. I love your stern. Yes, I'm not fixing My this. Stern scene. So I'm not, shoulder. I'm not it's fixing it. Almost a soldier for some reason. Your shoulder um, is looking great today, producer. Look up on the. Sh what the fuck? As we fade into a collective harmony, that's exactly what happens. So that's why no one can gaze. I I am resistant. They're to drawing the Medusa like stone. <laughs> their drawing of the bill hook is just the hook, but it would be like it would have a nice cleaving bit on it, if that's the case. I like the one with the spike, because basically, like a, a spear is is almost the perfect weapon. A spear is pretty fucking good. <laughs> An anatomy podcast for Halloween. Shoulders, knees, and toes. I, I got see. them backwards. Oh shit. 
But yeah, I, I really do enjoy medieval. Here's a good. Here's a here's a, here, another one. P- punching daggers are cool too. Guitars. Uh. Uh. Buttons. I. I don't <laughs> Elegance know. pry bar. I don't know what they do anymore. So. That one on the far left, like second, looks like they just took a butcher's knife and they were like, oh, Man, yeah. this is what we got. Oh, yeah. Ichigo, fucking eat your tits off. It's, but, a, it's a gross messer on a stick. Ra- yeah. Ra- <laughs> the Roncone? I'm liking that. I'm liking that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like the I like the little. There we go. The Giz arm. The Giz arm, which is like. I think it translates to like trip something. I don't remember. You know, yeah. you know what's funny? Some of these just look like they were like, dude, we don't really know what to put on the end of the stick. Oh yeah. Like, like what 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 cut of meat are we uh, are we going through? Is it pork? Is what, it ma- what's is the it... what's the one say? The the one that is it just a bill? Is that what it is? It like looks like a like that you'd you'd hang a lantern on it before you'd actually use it for fighting. Okay, yeah, the bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> what would you I guess like like you would catch a sword with it, but what else would you you would trip? But I'm yeah I'm liking the gis the gis the gis arm because it's got that that armor piercing spike. It's got the the trip, which to me is the most important part. If you can't trip your enemies with it while also keeping them at a distance with the poke, uh, I don't fucking want it. Because the idea well, is like I wouldn't be fighting alone. You you uh there's this thing called dual wielding. It's not just you having two different weapons and one in each hand. It's you have like a group of six dudes and you got some guys with halberds or pole arms or whatever, and the other guys mm-hmm. have swords. So you trip guys with the halberds or you, you disarm them or whatever, and then the dude with the sword just goes around and does the finishing blow when they're on the ground. And yeah. that's that's a really effective strategy. So the idea is that I would not be alone. If I was alone, I think it's gonna be a crow's beak. I don't know, I always like the uh I always like the rapier uh sword breaker combo. Oh yeah, that'd be pretty cool. But like, once you get something stuck in the hilt, you I just like, break that thing. All right, but I like something. I like something low skill. So you got your poking bits for getting through plate, and you got your club, your clubbing bit for crap, cracking skulls. Oh yeah. Nothing lower in skill than a fucking mace. Oh, a fl- are we talking spiked? Are we talking morning star? Are we talking flange? Because I have oh, my, we're, we're just I have ta- my op- opinions. I really do. We're just talking more. Uh, we're just talking uh, Morningstar because a flail would be like that's high level. No, shit. I'm talking about a flange, not a flail. Oh, a flange, yeah. I'm saying flange I'm, for the fucking win. Because if you if you I'm do, I'm saying whatever the whatever the um they were using in China. I would say a flange works better on armor and flesh. Well, I'm gonna say like okay, the Morningstar flesh, yeah, sure, but like you're gonna get you're gonna get gristle. You're gonna get that thing stuck in someone. Oh yeah, the morning star. I mean, that's, that's most things. A flanged mace. They're easy to make. They're easy to wield, and like you're gonna crack skulls. You're gonna crush armor. That's yeah. That's a, that's the short list. Um, a sword breaker with. So have you seen those crazy sword breaker shields? Uh, I have not. But I, I for some reason like there's an image in my mind about what they might look like well there's this the dude that makes those really cool that's this is the dude uh this is the dude this guy made a video on this oh he's also he's also made a lot of the wild hunt like helmets from the witcher yeah he makes he makes like modern day competitive it's this guy he's great uh he makes modern day helmets and armor for bow 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 hut i can't even say it but it's basically just like it's it's competitive night fighting with swords and shit yeah blunt weapons in like three mil thick armor like super thick armor uh yeah this thing's great so this thing right here you can't see it because it's looking directly at us it's just a long ass sword breaker and then yeah. these, these are like smaller like sword breaker slash catches and then this blade is retractable this fucking blade just comes out oh yeah just gotta play your acoustic while you have your shit Oh yeah, he's got a he's got an octave loot, but yeah, that's the that's the that's a close up on the breaker, and then all these little things are this this rim here, mm-hmm. and all these holes and notches, they're all to catch swords. It's all to catch a tip of a of a sword. Uh, it, don't stab! Definitely don't stab in this case. Oh yeah. Um, 
Is anyone here trained in armed combat with blades of any kind or what? No, we might think we are, but no. Uh, I want to like lose a hundred pounds and then go learn how to use a uh, uh, a Zweihander because I just watched another fighting video on the Zweihander and those things are awesome. And I feel like in most cases, when it comes to uh, uh, being trained with this type of weaponry, it usually comes down to whoever sees the other person first yeah. and is willing to make the killing blow. Uh, um, and I, yeah. And I would love to learn. <laughs> I, I'd love to learn how to use a a Krieg Messer. Uh, oh the, yeah, the, yeah, the big the big war knife. It's because the, the fun the fun story about the Messers is uh like swords were outlawed, but they outlaw mm -hmm. but knives weren't, so they just made their knives bigger. So it's a single edge with scaled mm -hmm. with scaled handles, and then they have yeah. a thing called the nail on the side, which would catch a blade. So it's got a guard with a nail, and uh that's it's like the fucking. German katana, and it's my favorite weapon. The German katana. German engineering at its best. But yeah, it's, just, it's a. And you fight. Just make you, the knife bigger. It's not. It's not super skilled combat again because it's a peasant weapon, like a falchion. I was gonna say, I figured, I figured you would. I figured both you and pigeons would have some training on this. So clearly, right, like. Um, oh man, I can just imagine like Dreamer doing brass knuckles and fighting like Tifa. Just <laughs> ha! Ha! Well, Dreamer's just have a heavy bag right now. Oh yeah. Hopefully you've been able to use it, but um, I know that he's like, been things sick lately. How, how are you doing? Are uh, you feeling better? Are you out of quarantine? Well, that's how all of uh, everybody feels, right? After years of imagination, you become the greatest swordsman ever in your mind. Oh yeah. But right when right when, when the moment comes. You're like, oh man, all I have is like the clothes hamper, and he's got the weapon, and it's over. You know, because because like most people are gonna react like Jackie Chan, where you're oh. like, oh, clo clothes hamper, that's all I need to beat this guy. Like, I don't need shit. Oh man, mm. now I'm just looking at weapons. <laughs> it's really uh, it's really sad that like Cold Steel makes a uh, they make a Gladius. Uh, shaped machete. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They make a machete that's just the gladius shape, and I want it for home defense. <laughs> I can hide behind a tower shield and just <laughs> poke the intruder. <laughs> just, just, could you imagine somebody walks in and then you just have like this tower shield with a very frightening image well, on it? It's this, just staring at them. This all came about because there's this awesome dude who defended his home from a home intruder with a bearded axe. And I'm just like, Bearded Axe is dope, but I don't think it would clear my fucking, my hallways, so. <laughs> I think, no. like, a bill hook or, like, a... Okay, so they're gonna have a knife or a gun. So, if they have a gun, you're fucked with whatever you choose. But a knife, basically just want, like, a spear or something you can, you want, you can stab with, you can keep them away from you. Well, that's why, that's why, like, when they enter, like, uh, Dreamer's saying with the, the leather mini skirt, you have to basically just start yelling. <laughs> Right, you, it's like it's like, lungs the it's like it's like bears. Uh, there was one cool like, there's this guy who just makes like cool bases and and then like uh, builds firearms. It's really mm -hmm. creative channel name. It's just called Guns and Guitars. Uh, he just had, pure honesty. Yeah, pure honesty. He's like so he's more of a gun nut and like he always like yeah. reviews tactical flashlights. And a strobing flashlight is like one of your best bets. Like that thing is just it's nauseating. If you can, like, strobe someone with a flashlight while you're trying to, like, get them. Oh, my God. There you go. That, like, can be the <laughs> the entire front face of your fucking tower shield is As just a, LEDs oh, yeah. that strobe. <laughs> That's a, well, there's a shield that does that. There's a there's a shield in a game. And uh, I think, like, Hacksmith Myth made it. That'd be absolutely hilarious. It's like a police shield. Just, just walking straight into like spotlights that keep strobing. Oh, here it is. So, uh, I don't know what game it's from, but the hacksmith made it. It uh. Oh, Rainbow Six Siege. I got that makes sense. Yeah, that, that thing was wild. Because you're just gonna blind them, and then they can't. Yeah, they can't do shit. So that with the gladius, and we're talking. <laughs> I'm not fixing this scene. We're gonna have segmented breath A. Forever. Forever, ever. Until somebody else comes on, and then we won't. <laughs> Basically, but, um, until someone else fixes the scene. 
Uh, what is this? This is gonna look like I'm surprised. Is this a over the hill. is this a demolition bar? Oh god, it's just all of, it's just all of you. It's just that. It's just the top part. This is. <laughs> it's just a super crowbar. Oh yeah. Well, uh, there's also like the demolition bar. Those are cool. I would. I would all. Yeah, if if it wasn't crazy heavy. Yeah. I think uh, I, in, uh, a long, like, really, like, months ago, months ago, I remember being in History's um, channel, and he was playing one of the, uh, like, you know, the zombie apocalypse games. And one of the questions was, like, what, what, like, normal item, weapon, or thing would you have if you could this. have in, like, a zombie apocalypse? The 100% of uh, this. Uh, I actually went with, um, I actually went with, like, a full fucking size, like, pipe wrench. Oh, yeah. I see a lot more value in it than a crowbar. So, there's... Because it can do all this stuff, but... Right, but they have, they have well. those big-ass pipe wrenches that are also, like, like that. That's, that's yeah. it. That's the weapon. That's what I'm going with. Oh, Damn. yeah. Damn. Because I mean, there's t there's tons of things you could do with the pipe wrench that you can accomplish. I'm gonna can't I'm gonna go, uh, gonna open a fire hydrant and just blast them all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not just all line or up. Open any sort of valve system that you may need. Yeah, when you're um, when you're when you're hit with a bunch of valves, you know you gotta. I mean, pretty that's a pretty good seat. alternative. This is like my remember. This is my favorite aisle at Home Depot. <laughs> it's just what would I? Oh, I don't even know what I that see. is. Is that is that the Pigeons, is that the post where it's like just like the uh forefathers intended and like they like bust into your home and you're just like actually i'm gonna look at it because i think it's the it, same one if it ain't got a bottle opener on it i ain't taking it to the apocalypse that's pretty good okay i'm gonna i'm gonna read it for everybody okay but read yeah a demolition Elliot. bar so you have a sledge and then you have prize and you have a wrench Go it's for just it. basically a, a multi-tool. Oh yeah. Um, that you can cleave skulls with. <laughs> that you can sh fracture fucking tibias. This is uh this is a this is a really old post, but it's still funny in my mind. But uh, own a musket for home defense, since that's what the founding fathers intended. Four ruffians break into my house. What the devil is? I grab my powdered wig and Kentucky rifle, <laughs> blow a golf ball-sized hole through the first man. He's dead on the spot. Draw my pistol on the second man. Misses him entirely because it's smooth bore and the nail and nails the neighbor's dog. I have to resort to the cannon mounted at the top of the stairs loaded with grape shot. Tally ho, lads. The grape shot shreds two men in the blast. The sound and extra shrapnel set off car alarms. Fix bayonet and charge the last terrified rap scallion. Bleeds out waiting for the police to arrive since triangular bayonet wounds are impossible to stitch up. Just as the founding fathers intended. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me... The, the stagecoach blunderbuss is probably the one I would... Tally ho, lads! And then the fucking cannon fires from the top. I can't find the exact stagecoach blunderbuss, but uh, uh, that would be fucking sweet because it's, it's basically just grape shot one shot and if you come at somebody with a blunderbuss they're gonna lose their shit but there's one that had a bayonet on it that I can't find I was on, like, there we go pawn stars book and axe is the best pigeons that's what I would carry a book and an axe a book and an axe so I could I could if I could also fight boredom yeah, exactly. I fight both my enemies and boredom, of which is one of my enemies. Though I do have a shotgun. Wife doesn't want a loaded gun in the house, so I settled for a 13-pound crowbar. Yeah, one guy, I, I like I was talking to like a physical therapist or something. I can't remember who I was talking to, but they're like, they're like uh, yeah, hockey stick. Oh, that's my uncle. Hockey stick over the door. Because <laughs> he was a, a skilled hockey player, and he's just, yeah. Several concussions to prove it. Oh, yeah. How's that donut treat you, treating you, big it's guy? It's actually pretty good. I'm gonna... Are these the, uh... Are these, like, the... 
Are these vegan? Is that what they are? What? La Bomba. Oh, they're gluten-free. Nice. They're actually pretty good. On a, on our anniversary in October, probably near Halloween, we're going to go to the... I'll, 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 I'll have a planned deviation. I want to go get cider and donuts. Because that's nice. that's a yearly, like... Instead of going there three times in uh, in October and a couple times in September, I'll just go once. A super trip. And that makes sense, Dreamer. Like, they're just like, oh, yeah, it's impossible oh. to cut, fix a triangle wound. Oh, yeah, those three-pointed, those things are against the G Geneva Convention. Any sort of spiral blade as well. Oh, I got, I got something that I, I found the other day on Twitter that okay. I want to talk about. Has, there's a, and this has been going on for two years, right? Um, oh my god, it's just I, a bunch of, like, I have uh, a, destroyers. I have a new goal. I have a snowman. <laughs> it's just called snowman. <laughs> I have snowman. A, I have a new goal in life. To make snowman? Oh, uh, yes. Or for <laughs> a fan to send one in. Uh, I won't make it, but if you want, could you send a snowman? Oh, making that would be sweet. There's so much. There's there's quite the panel wash on this guy. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot. It looks just like a dingy thing, but like let's. There's a lot of airbrushing. There's a lot of uh, uh, rub and buff going on. It was this? Do you, were all these parts 3D printed? Do you think? Uh, it's probably kit bashed because Bandai also makes Star Destroyers. Okay, because it definitely so, looks like a lot I think, of shit. I think there's a lot of Gundam in here as well. I think it's like a... If there's any Gundam parts, it's like a 1 to 60 perfect grade size. This oh, this, this, the skeleton, the feet, and like the hands, like the... Yeah. You can tell which parts are obviously Gundam parts. Yeah, and then we have some like tree bark over here and over here. Oh, yeah. Kit bash. That's, that, that might only be like one Star Destroyer. No, there's, yeah, they there's, just have the... Here's the executor. Here's the, is this Vader's ship or is this Palpatine's ship over here? It's uh, a... So far, it's a shield. Probably with a weapon in it. Probably no, with a beam weapon in that's, it. That's either the executor or uh, the other one. I think this is Darth Vader's Star Destroyer. It's like a hundred times bigger than a Star Destroyer or some stupid shit like that. It's a floating... Something that doesn't isn't necessary. Welcome, welcome in, Eli. It's L.A. if it could fly. It's 100%. It's L.A. So in the in the extended universe, extended canon of Star Wars, the ships <laughs> would get so big it would take like two days, two to four days to cross them. So like someone just like wrote like a, a thing was like, man, deck 37 CA has been on fire for two weeks and we still can't get there. <laughs> like all our tomatoes are rotten over in the, f in the fields. <laughs> we can't get there. That's cr like just the thought of it being like I work, I work in the ass end, but I need to get to the tip. Oh yeah, in ca in case of an emergency, like these things are bigger than if the Death Star is a moon, these things are bigger than that. So like, why you the fuck? You know what that means though? Oh man! Like people are just gonna work in sectors. Oh no, they're and not never that big. Go to other parts. They're, they're not as not big as go moons. to any other part. Because the Death Star would take a while to get across if it's the size of a moon. Could you imagine the elevator? Oh yeah, it's like an elevator from the bottom to the top. There'd have to be a few. It'd have to be this <laughs> like you're taking five elevators to get where you need to go. The show always eventually gets to Gundam. It's just a oh, it's a collective what's, thing here. What was? <laughs> <laughs> what What do you think? My interview. Apparently... My interviewer liked my background, but also didn't like me enough to hire me. So. Oh, that's really. They, did they give you a? A no. response today? I got a response yesterday in, a, in the middle of my 12-hour stream, which is why I went for 12 hours, because then I was just depressed streaming after that. I was just like, no. okay, it's just time to work on my factory, because maybe that'll love me. I, I just, I didn't there's know where no, to go with that, because I was like, I'm going to work on my factory. There's no word of, there's, I, I just have to share this. Marilyn Manson looks like he's about to ask if you've been eating well. And offer me a casserole. Looking like a lunch lady. Oh god, what a terrible shithead. Gods. What a piece of shit. And no, I'm not just saying that because of his girlfriend's like uh, accusations and like the chick that was in um, 
Westworld, making uh, legislation specifically because what he put her through. Yeah. Uh, I'm also talking about all the other stories, like the deaf girl that they sodomized. <laughs> yeah, because um, that that him. I knew a him and I the, knew a really really big fan. Him and Trent Marilyn Reznor. Manson. Him and Trent Re- Trent Reznor went to town on this chick, and because like he Just, put it in his book, Trent Reznor got real mad that he told that story. <laughs> So, like, fuck that guy, too, then, I guess. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, I, I had I have a friend who, like, really, really was into Marilyn Manson. I mean, to the point where, like, attended many concerts. Uh, in fact, he had had lunch and, and talked to uh, Marilyn Manson's dad a lot. Like, he was such a, an avid fan, they knew him. And he had had, actually, outings with... Um, his dad and whatnot and he he threw away and packaged up like just everything he owned uh when it got really serious about marilyn manson and i'm like it, it was really a powerful thing for him to do right because a lot of fans would just carry on and they'd idolize somebody oh right? yeah they just it's, he literally just packed it up and said that was that's enough of know, that like they uh, yeah that like the the whole michael jackson like man he fucked like Give him, give him a, like at least three kids for all those good albums. Like, give him, yeah. give him a couple mulligans. Like, no, dude, no. That, that, fuck all of that. Yeah, we're not gonna. We're not, they're apologists. That's the word I'm looking for. They go on being apologists about their because the cult of personality is so strong. Yeah. Well, and, and then also like, like um, Mussolini I, kept the trains running. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I mean the the things are still running mostly, so everything's fine, right? Oh yeah. But, um, don't meet your heroes, folks. Well, he totally did, and I thought that was super surprising. Like, oh yeah. Uh, but um, yeah. No, I, it was a really like mature thing to do. Um, to just to put that away and and be like, yeah definitely helped me a lot through my life but i can't you know sit back and let it be um hey i kind of have to show this do it this is terrible it's on a it's on a it's on a different uh subreddit it just says checkmate there's so That's much what... there's so much wrong here wait there's, <laughs> there's a lot wrong is here it, is it just do they just take like a a classic like strat type head and then add another? Well, first, they they started with a bass. It's all bass tuners, <laughs> and then they just fuck a JB welded on the cutting board. <laughs> this is my six string bass. <laughs> and then like this is just atrocious. Can we just look at the nut quality? Like, oh god. Oh, yeah. That that string's not even. Uh, uh, they just tied shit together here. That nut kind of looks like. Uh, it, it has like extra holes in it, right? For other, oh, other yeah. strings at this point. This is part of a 12 string here. Oh, were they like, look at the edge. It almost looks like they were going to go for some pearl wrapping, but they just didn't get around to it. Oh my god. It's actually probably a permanent marker where they marked here, it to cut this, it. There's just a chunk missing here. I like it. Oh, yeah. That sounds brutal. Hey, at least well, the, those are there's... some pretty nice bass tuners. I'll give them that. Wow, those Grover. No. <laughs> yeah, it's some nice sp- split shaft. Uh... But oh, like, uh, no, it's it's all cool. Like when people do their projects and stuff. But also, like, what were you thinking? What was going through the process? Is this another thing that like we were talking about, Elliot? Where an individual like thinks something's really cool that they're doing, but then like the rest of the world looks at it and is like, what? Because it feels like like those like some of those know. musicians. It's just it's it sucks because he was so like, uh, he got blamed for Columbine and then he was like a beacon of free speech through the '90s, and uh, just like hey, do what you want, do what you feel. Uh, yeah. He was a he was a beacon of hope for all the freaks and dorks, like uh, like hey guys, I don't know if you know this, but I I used to be kind of a dork. I know I look like a a cool badass motherfucker right now, but young. Young worst enemies, young Hendershot here, who's is, wasn't 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 the coolest guy, and uh, yeah, it turns out to just also be a terrible dude on top of all that. Are you talking about yourself or no? Because you 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 uh you flipped really quick there, but um. Yeah, you yeah. gotta you gotta you gotta work on the quick flip. 
you gotta work on the quick flip because if you don't then the context doesn't change <clears throat> but um that's true because like i mean in interviews that was always the thing that he was really intelligent right but uh i found out when i saw him that not really intelligent on stage uh specifically getting really really hammered before yeah. concerts and just falling all over yourself like it's totally cool shows, i'm assuming to get buzzed but... his live shows were garbage um later brian don't don't sell that nintendo no like seriously like marilyn get a, get a good Manson price was like is is really intelligent yeah, just that, not all that staged shit fell on him a couple of times like he climbed the cross and he's too fat and so i mean I think there was one where he fell out of his big chair or something, or something that he gets on, uh, which I think led to like a, a leg industry, a injury. He fell out of his big chair. Like he, yeah. Well, he like I know it sounds like he like he was eating food in front of them, and he just falls out of his big chair, and then he's sitting there crying on the no. Oh, the uh, big the big spoon fell off the harness and just like thwapped him. And he fell. And then, then, then his mom had to come out and change his diaper, and it was a very unpleasant concert all over. Um, I'll be back, gonna go sell stuff. So, I, do it up. <laughs> good luck. Get a good price. Good luck. Don't just get like a hundred bucks for your fucking your Les Paul. He uh, fell out of a he fell out of a mega lazy boy and broke his leg. Get a get a get a good. See when he when when he stood up the uh, the uh, the recline snapped him. Underneath his knees. I cool. I saw a cool video today. There's actually like scientific proof that a a, a a low carb, high saturated fat diet can lower your LDL by fifteen percent. There's a there's a really good study done uh, from a doctor where like they studied they, they they got a bunch of people who were overweight but they weren't like they didn't have heart disease um, or high cholesterol. They're just overweight. And they put them on like a they they made them run and lose ten per, like twelve percent of their body weight. They lost twelve. They lost ten, uh, and then mm -hmm. and then they fed them for twenty weeks. They provided the meals. They all yeah. get the same food, just in different uh different uh variations, different amounts. So there was like a low carb group, um, a high a moderate and a high, and they showed after that like after the twenty weeks there was. No increase in cholesterol in the uh, high saturated fat group. And it's like, hey, that's that's uh, an important science to do. Thank you. Yeah. This is, this is a good article. It's a good video. That was like ten minutes before stream. I'm, I'm really just meh today. That's okay. That's 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 all right. It, you know, it can be meh. I'm saving. I'm reserving my energy for uh, sixty nine. We really? also got a sugar is the thief. Yeah, uh, so, uh, so far there's there's not really much than that initial spike of energy and brain fuel. Yeah, fats. I've never really considered that to be a problem. The, the what with the brain fuel? Oh, just, it's just sugar, just quick, like not very good brain oh, fuel. Oh yeah, yeah. Ketones are like really good brain fuel. Um. And that's it's harder to get those, but your brain can run out of mm. them just fine. Holy shit! Is this is a this is a grinder made out of a five gallon bucket? I kind of just want to. I'm just I'm just this this is the Reddit episode, guys. This is the Reddit episode I always wanted. Yeah, but of course, palm tree oil is re well. I mean, palm kernel oil. It's it's a lot more because like. That's the the of basis how destructive for it is. Nutella. It's a. Uh... Oh yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go say bye to the shadow monster. I'll be right back. Aw. You do it up. Hey, you guys like weed? Check out this grinder. It's. <laughs> it's just. It's got like a port. Uh, it's got like a a, a bulkhead doorknob on it. It's got submarine hardware. That's ridiculous. I like weed, but I don't want to die. <laughs> That's too much. 
I just want to see the finished product. Like, it better actually be good. Uh, because that's a lot of stuff to have a fine tolerance on. Stay off the weed, duh. How you doing? You were deemed to hydrate, but now you're speaking. How's my new affiliate? My, 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 my boy. I just gotta see that. This is a long fucking gif. Oh, and there we go. Yup, that's weed. Interesting. How are you guys doing today? Let's give one of these. Do one of these scenes and maybe turn the lo-fi back on. Oh, yeah. Incredibly tired. I heard him come back, but, you know. No, he's not. So, your, your sleep schedule is still fucky, I take it. That weed was enough for an entire penitentiary. <laughs> uh, that's, that was enough for like a Snoop Dogg green room. That's about it. Absolutely. Man, okay, so my advice was to just like make yourself get up early every morning. Make yourself get out of bed at 7 o'clock or whenever the sun gets up. And uh, then by the time it's time to sleep, You'll be fucking tired. Oh yeah. I'm gonna plant weed right now. Have seven seeds in water. Six northern lights and one power plant. I have not heard of power plant. What's, what's its stats? Oh yeah. Gotta get that fucking vibe going. I'm probably gonna stream some Factorio uh, over the weekend. I would hope. I was gonna. I wish I had a capture because I've I've almost 100%ed God of War, and that would be a really good one to stream. Sativa from South Africa. 21% THC uplifting lemon. Oh, yeah. I try, but I never wake up when I need to. Be back later. See ya, GMF. You go plant that weed. Have a good one. Watch out for cucumber guards. I think I found right. a new, uh, I think I found a new stream background. For me, anyway. I got, I got a new green screen background. It's just... <laughs> that's how we deal with it. Mm -hmm. that... It's not bad. People are wild. And you're privy. Well, and then there was also like the aqueduct system where people would literally like, as it would carry shit out, ah! they would shit and it would go down. Oh, yeah. It was part of the Greek system, and I'm just like, dude... I, I hope they separated all of those aqueducts. This is good for now. I think this makes a good uh, a good conversation piece. Oh, well, I was yeah. gonna say that there's a uh, there's a lawyer uh, right now who I don't know if it's today or yesterday. But yeah, I think it's actually today. Um, he's been in house or under house arrest for two years for uh, speaking out against Chevron and it's. Uh, its treatment of indigenous people and uh they they put him under house arrest and the actual judges and stuff are tied to chevron and it's just you know it's just wild to think that like our justice system of course is doing this to somebody in fact the un has called for his um have a called for him to be uh, uh removed from house arrest but we know historically speaking that the u.s does not um does not listen to the UN whatsoever, despite the fact that um, apparently we're, you know, a part of it. What? What? Oh, that was a joke for chat. That's fucked up, dude. No, seriously, like, it's crazy. Um, but when your judge has ties to Chevron that have oh, been yeah. proven... So why did they hit him with house arrest for, like... <clears throat> the, the only thing you could get somebody on is defamation, and then that's... 
<clears throat> you don't get that punishment for that. Um, let me see. Because. <clears throat> Uh, wow, really? Let me see. Um, <laughs> he is an American attorney known for his legal... Uh, Steve Donzinger Shit. is an American attorney known for his legal battles with Chevron, particularly the Lago Agrio oil field case. He's re he represented over 30,000 farmers and indigenous Ecuadorians in a case against chevron related to environmental damage and health effects caused by oil drilling nice um let's see uh the ecuadorian courts awarded the plaintiffs 9.5 billion in damages which led chevron to withdraw its assets from ecuador and launch legal action against dungeonger in the u.s in 2011 chevron filed a rico suit Oh. against Donzinger in New York City. The case was heard by U.S. District Judge Louis A. Kaplan. They're going to use the that RICO the ruling... Act? Yeah, they, he... they used the RICO. How? He's not determined... a drug dealer. <laughs> He's not a drug boy. Did he have yeah, a small it's... amount of cocaine? Um, the... that, by the way, that's the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organization Act. Uh, for people who don't know, you can look it up. Oh, so um, it's not just it's not just drugs. It's for wreck. Yeah, it's it's Inf yeah. influence. Oh wow, corruption. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. They said that the, the the U.S. District Judge determined that the ruling of Ecuadorian courts could not be enforced in the U.S. because it was procured by fraud, bribery, and racketeering activities. As a result, this case, uh, Dozinger was disbarred from practicing law in New York. In 2018, and he's been what? placed under house arrest since 2019, and his like trial stuff is happening like right now. I think um, the United States High Commissioner for Human Rights ruled that the pretrial detention imposed on Donzinger was illegal and called for his release in September, just now. Um, what? I, okay, I'll stop with the rec record scratches. Okay, but it's um, it's it's pretty so record scratchable. So just to add some more um, stuff that was going on, it basically um, after he was put under house arrest um, and awaiting his trial in 2019, uh, during his appeal of Kaplan's RICO decision in July 2021, U.S. District Judge Loretta Preska found him guilty. He is now facing the possibility of a six-month jail sentence. But again, I think I don't think that went through. While under house arrest in 2020, 29 Nobel laureates described the actions taken by Chevron against Dozinger as judicial harassment, and human rights campaigners have described Chevron's actions as an example of a strategic lawsuit against public participation, also known as a slap. Um, yeah, and in April 2021, six members of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, which is kind of the new thing that's going on right now, demanded that they review his case and and if you don't know the congressional progressive caucus that includes like uh aoc uh, and the like so yeah shit. i saw this on twitter the other day and i'm like i can't believe i didn't know about this because of the shit i like to keep up on is is watching how fucked up and corrupt um <clears throat> these groups are especially like our own government and judicial system because like i was saying for years the u.s has outright ignored their part in the UN whenever they fuck up or do anything. Oh uh, yeah. They don't have to they don't have to hear the call ever. Right. Uh because they just they just do bullying military might bullshit. Which I I'm, I'm not surprised by like, you know, a a country that was founded on bullshit like it was. So that's something to talk about like I think the Ecuadorian ruling makes sense. They're doing business in Ecuador. Mhm. Mm they're doing business in another country. You're going to change hands on laws. Oh, yeah. That's a, so, I mean, I would love for there to be some sort of global court system, but that means there's a global government, which that's super bad. Oh, it's super, that's it's super bad. A one globe fucking, oh, globalization bad. No. <laughs> but... We've, Cap, yeah. we've already globalized like it is not a yeah we're already there it's just like we're now still doing the border we shit. need we need a, a one world government to fucking keep it all on track and uh the un's trying to do that but that's uh, 
Yeah, they always fall up short, though. When China and America um, are just like, fuck you, UN. World peace, yeah, bad. <laughs> well, you know, like Russia, China, well, the US. If, if it's a one world government, Elijah, why wouldn't it be like the Chinese or the Russian type government? Why it would it be one of those? Huh? That's fucked up. Well, it's just, uh, it comes so, down to every level. This global shit, right? It would also be really helpful for taxation, where, like, hey, you did all your business over here. Like, you made all this profit in America, but you're based out of, like, Sri Lanka or somewhere with, like, yeah. no tax. Like, hey, how about you, like, pay some taxes globally, and we can, uh, we can then sprinkle that in, like, your bauxite mines where you got your aluminum coca cola you could sprinkle it over in sri lanka sri lanka where you're like doing where you're stationed they could get some of that money or you could like put some tax money back to like where your market is in like europe and america but you yeah. know that would just make sense to have like the ability to do that to stop com- companies from traveling like thousands of miles away to avoid actual taxation Plus, I feel like there needs to be like a um, an added part here that will make me sound biased, but uh, a fuck Chevron in general, uh, historically speaking, fuck Chevron. Like, there's nothing redeemable about Chevron. Like, just like there's nothing redeemable about BP. Like, <laughs> or or I mean, I think I think Exxon's trying, but there's still nothing really redeemable there. You know, like uh, you you fuck things shit up until the market changes, which is basically how capitalism in this case works, right, Elliot? Where you fuck things up until you have to change your market. Basically, because it's too costly to be to go green and to to you know not but, be shitty. But but what about the pamphlet? What about the smiling blonde lady? Our <laughs> yeah, what employees, about that? Our employees put values into action. We're a global team united by a shared set of values. <laughs> it's hearing around the world, except for in Ecuador. It's true, though. They are a united by shared values of greed and nepotism. I Call wish that there was an the Chevron way. The, world. <laughs> the Chevron way. From our volunteering initiatives to our community, they're out resource uh, the scouting for like. Oh, there's oil. Over- <laughs> This it's, is like a, a cre- as creepy as the Peace Corps. Diversity, oh yeah. And, and <laughs> you know, like, you'll see that our values are so much more than words on a screen. <laughs> uh, honestly, yeah, Holy exactly. shit. <laughs> <laughs> They're our way of life. It's so it's like like Ted in fucking marketing through this together in thirty minutes. <laughs> We're more than the, the <laughs> words on the screen. Like, oh my god! And then like, if the words just started like melting off into oil, it just it's like you're here, you're at Chevron. Doc. <laughs> like, it just you're it's just she- like it's mind control. It's just honest. In it's countries just completely honest. In we countries kill, around the world, all the penguins. Chevron employees are a plague. <laughs> not for not not through our pollution. We we end out there with brass knuckles <laughs> and punched we into death one at a time. <laughs> one at a time. Uh, they're applying their skills, experiences, and energy in volunteer activities that help improve education, provide basic needs, foster new business opportunities. I think that's mainly what they're doing, and yeah, yeah. ultimately strengthen the communities in which we operate. Chevron's Anar, uh, someone, cooking a cooking class. We could go to Kazakhstan and take a cooking class. Can that be our hundredth episode? We go to Kazakhstan and take a Chevron cooking and we, glass, and we and we do it. We do it with all of our big Chevron money. Oh yeah, we just like bring these. We wear these Chevron shirts here. Just and sh- instead of helping, we just take the hundred dollar bills and just go like this. No, I would just like I would use it as a little napkin to just. Oh, exact. Well, yeah, and then just toss it in the trash because, oh, you know, yeah. that's basically the attitude these Use fucking... Use it to light my cigar oh. to blow smoke in the face of a baby seal. Through Chevron, yeah. humankind employees, re- retirees, and contractors in the United States provide support for their community throughout the... Okay, that's... Ugh. Mostly contractors and retirees. You got a bunch of free labor in there, a bunch of uh, labor you don't have to support properly because they've contracted out. You remember? You remember the? Uh, everybody remembers this film, oh, right? Oh, <clears throat> check uh, this out! Check this out! Can you look up Chevron's value for me, please? Can you look up their what? What are the? What is? What is the value? What is Chevron as a corporation valued at? 
Uh, Chevron. I'll, I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Chevrons. Because these are some really good numbers. Hell yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, you know, just a thirty-six point twelve billion. Oh, uh, 36, net income wait, three point eight billion. Thirty-six point twelve. That's this is easy math because they gave thirty-six point seven million uh, in contributions in the uh, to the U.S. nonprofits through a combination of employee and retiree giving and company matching funds. Oh my God! Look, look at th look at that. They gave like a one percent of their. Oh no, uh, less than one percent because a billion is a thousand million, so a, a thousandth of their, their <laughs> total revenue. Their net their income was only was only three point zero eight billion, but you know. And right now, uh, if you look at their fin financials, if you just look it up right now, uh, their stocks are going up, and their um, their Y and Y is one hundred twenty six. Percent. So, like they're they're just doing I wonder fine. if it's I wonder if it's mostly in retirees because they're like they feel so terrible about what they've done at Chevron that now they're trying to like get into heaven. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> 193 good job. 193,000 out volunteer hey, hours guys, were logged. Corporations are people too and like they're trying you know as you shake oh, yeah. your fucking conservative agenda at me that like you know you hear businesses that, mean well you hear that chevron and doritos are dating hey finally uh we found something on this podcast where you get to see me actually heated uh where you can see me the whole way just the what? whole thing is a joke <laughs> what i'll stop with the record scratch <laughs> i almost thought it was gonna be the weird batman like thing or the da -da -da -da. <laughs> Um, worst enemies worldwide, wide, wide, worst enemies worldwide, wide, wide, prestige worldwide. The Pina, the 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 you know the Pinta, the Santa Maria. Oh, do you in the bottom while I'm drinking sangria? Do you guys, do you guys remember this spill? Go down because holes can float. There, yeah. So the, uh, uh, the Deepwater Horizon oil spill that happened like 2010. Do you guys remember that from BP? So, I really wish BP would just put on their website like, you remember Dawn's marketing campaign about the ducks? Yeah, so, we did that. Oh yeah, that so, was us. Dreamer, the most I've seen in a room would been would have been three million dollars. Um, yeah, three three million and change. And there, the, he's he's given the illustration like, yeah, like that's a. That's not a lot of money. Yeah. It's, it's, here's a billion dollars. It's 10 pallets of ten hundred pallets of hundred dollar bills. 10 pallets. So basically you can't fit it in your walk-in closet. A pallet is a hundred million dollars. A pallet's a hundred million dollars. Got it. If you have a walk-in like, closet. Uh, you can fit a couple million you can, into a suitcase like yeah you can't I put know. i look at those like the did you bring the money and it's a briefcase and it's full of 20s i'm like that's not that's like a hundred thousand dollars you piece of shit i've got a couple mil in here uh no you don't <laughs> like deep water horizon oil 20s. spill wait don's parent company is deep water horizon like it was their fault no no, no. I, I was i was joking about uh oh. like when that beat that gulf of mexico like deep water horizon spill happened yeah, Unilever. I was that, Unilever capitalized on it like Don cleans up ducks. Yeah, but but yeah, exactly. But that's the thing. Like, I want because like Chevron, you're just like they just said, hey, we just did all this terrible stuff. I wish that like you know BP would just be like, hey, remember that really famous like marketing campaign? Yeah, that was us. If 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 companies were were completely honest about what what they actually ended up doing. There we go. Uh, the first step to reducing your emissions is to know where you stand. Find your own carbon footprint with our new calculator and share your pledge today. Oh, yeah. I pledge not to spill 4.0 million barrels of oil into the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> and dangerous. <laughs> that's that's one of, hilarious. That's one of my favorite things. I pledge not to spill... <laughs> <laughs> 4.9 billion i just hate how they do that shit like like i agree with both um like uh 
like I agree with like attacking the companies for their stupidity about blaming the individual, but I also agree with uh, what is it, Mark uh, Manon or whatever, Mark Marin, um, Mark Marin, where he was just like, did you see the special where he's like, hey, there's gonna be this point <laughs> I brought where my a portal bags opens to the up, I brought my yeah. bags to the group. <laughs> A portal opens up and lizards are going to come out and the sky is going to be on fire and I'm going to look up and, and somebody's going to just be like, well, I brought my bags. It's not on me. <laughs> brought my bags. Brought, yeah, brought my I bags. I used the reusable straw. Like, I don't want to get after people for trying to be better. I, I don't think that's a good a good look. I think that's pro- that's stupid. But also, I want people to think about the accountability that these companies need to have first and fourth most. If we want to do better, we got to make sure that the things available to us are better not we have to find extra companies to make more products to pollute shit worse while the other products are still being like it doesn't change anything it just it just compiles it just makes it worse like i know there's the whole boycotting aspect right where it's just like well if we use enough of them they'll stop and i'm like but we're not going to we're not going to convince enough people to do that it's not how it works convenience is so powerful we have to we have to basically cut the, the like the head off right there. I want to. But... I think we should just do a react video to this. Um... Oh shit! I'm just saying. Oh. Yeah, there's this Kurtzkegard in a nutshell video that it's like it's basically about the same thing about. Um... I heard that. I still heard it. <laughs> Sam's it's mouth still... Sam's mouth farted. Uh well, congratulations. So it's like a um can you fix climate change and the the title screen is a big no with an asterisk and I feel like we should just watch it and react to it because Yeah, 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 it sure, was, sure, it was why such not? A, you're going to need the audio though, but uh, Oh, where where's the where's the I'll I'll link it. Yeah, link it. Link it to everybody in chat. We'll watch it and we'll react to it. Gotta go see you, Dreamer. Have a good one. Have a good one. Hope Thanks for stopping by. I hope you're by. feeling better. I hope you're. Uh, hope, yes. I wish your family much, much tithings from the Shadow Monsters next harvest. Um, so yeah, let me know when you're. We'll just do like a three, two, one on it. Um. All right. I'm here. I'm here. Uh, three, two, one. Play. Never before in human history have we been richer. More advanced, more powerful. And we'll just talk over and it. Yet, because we it's... feel overwhelmed in the face of rapid climate change. It seems simple on the surface. Greenhouse gases trap energy from the sun and transfer it to our atmosphere. This leads to warmer winters, harsher summers. Dry places become drier and wet places wetter. Countless ecosystems will die while the rising oceans swallow coasts and the cities we build on them. So why don't we just, like, prevent all of that? Well, it's complicated. Why don't we just... The public debate yeah. about stopping rapid climate change often focuses on a I few love in a nutshell, features, though. like coal plants, cars, or burping cows. And so the solutions are often simplistic. Rows of solar panels, biking to work, something something sustainability. And a huge talking point something, something is personal sustainability. responsibility. <laughs> Personal you responsibility. should change your lifestyle to prevent rapid climate change, which we'll find out together in the next few minutes. Have this is one of those videos where we want to encourage you to watch to the end, because to discuss real, doable solutions, we first need to understand the problem. A fuller picture. Modern industrial society as we constructed it in the last 150 years is inherently destructive to the planet. Basically, everything we do to make our lives easier, safer and more comfortable is making things worse for the biosphere. The food we eat, the streets we walk on, the clothes we wear, the gadgets we use, the way we move around and the pleasant temperatures we artificially create around us. While most people know about the serious impact of energy, beef, cars, and planes, many major polluters are barely ever talked about. The emissions leaking out of landfills are as significant as the emissions of all the jets in the air. More CO2 is released to run our homes than from all cars combined. And the emissions produced when making a new car is equivalent to building just two meters of road. 
So it is nice to switch to electric cars, but they won't solve anything if we keep building roads the same way. Fixing one small part of the industrial system is not enough. Each of the many different parts needs its own solution, and many of them aren't straightforward. But even where we know what do to do, it. just because it's <laughs> do it, do it, <laughs> doesn't mean we're Turn it off already. willing to implement it. There are many grey areas in the fight against rapid climate change. The most prominent one is the divide between rich and poor. <gasps> he said it. Emissions. He said it. He said the thing. Poverty. There is a clear connection between the prosperity of a nation and its carbon emissions. In other words, richer people tend to cause more emissions. So the key to fixing climate change is simply for the world's richest to cut back on their extravagant lifestyles, right? While this would help, it wouldn't make the problem go away. This is because 63% of global emissions come from low to middle income countries. Countries where most people are not living extravagantly, but are trying to escape poverty at worst and achieve a comfortable lifestyle at best. The unfortunate reality is that currently, escaping poverty and becoming middle class creates unavoidable emissions. So asking developing countries to cut emissions just looks like an attempt to keep them down. It's very hard to argue that a region should protect their primeval <coughs> forests and spend money on solar panels instead of burning wood when it can't meet basic needs for significant parts of its population. But cutting hmm. back is not a popular demand, especially if the countries making these demands got rich by causing environmental damage in the past. So for billions of people, more emissions are a good thing, personally. When we forget about this, we tend to propose unworkable solutions. Take concrete. 8% of CO2 emissions are released by the concrete manufacturing industry. Okay, cool. Stop using concrete, right? But right now, concrete is also a cheap and easy way for growing populations in developing countries to build affordable housing. And there are many examples like that. Even rich countries aren't immune from disagreeing about rapid climate change solutions. Banning coal, gas and oil from the energy mix is slowed down by heated discussions about what should replace them. The citizens can be strictly against nuclear power, but also oppose wind or solar infrastructure in their backyards. In principle, all of these issues can be overcome, but there are things we don't currently know how to overcome. The most problematic one is food. Emit or die. We will emit soon or need die. To feed 10 billion people, and we don't know how to do that without emitting greenhouse gases. Because of the nature of modern food production that requires fertilizers or manure, it's impossible to have zero emissions food. Rice alone emits so much methane each year that it practically equals the emissions of all the air traffic in the world. What's worse is that the foods we like the most emit the most. 57% of food emissions come from animal-based foods, although they make up only 18% of the world's calories and 37% of its protein. And as people across the world grow richer, they want more meat. Traditional diets in most cultures were primarily plant-based with a little meat on top. But with the rise of industrial-style meat production and factory farming, meat has become a staple food. A regular indulgence in developed countries and a symbol of status and wealth in developing countries. Today, about 40% of the world's habitable land is used for meat production in some form or another, the size of North and South America combined. This is land we could otherwise allow native ecosystems to regrow, like forests in the Amazon, and suck carbon out of the atmosphere, but instead, most of it is used to feed animals. The available solutions are uniquely able to make everybody on the political spectrum, rich or poor, unhappy. Meat is highly emotional, and there are a lot of whataboutism arguments floating around, like comparing it to the worst sources of emissions. In the end, it's pretty simple. Eating less meat alone won't stop climate change, but we also can't stop climate change without eating less meat. The same holds true for other things that are less crucial to our survival, but frankly not realistic to make go away. Like air travel, overseas shipping, mining and the production of devices that play YouTube videos. So what does this mean? Do we need to give up our way of life, and can the poor never achieve it? Can't some technology save us so we can continue to drive our big cars and eat meat every day? Solutions versus expenses.
In principle, this technology already exists. Direct air capture of CO2 draws carbon dioxide from the air so that it can be stored underground or transformed into products. So why aren't we implementing it in every industry everywhere? Because with the technology we have right now, this would cost some $10 trillion per year or half the United States GDP. Where? This money has to come from yeah. somewhere and currently no lot. one is offering it. Just dumping these costs on massive polluters like steel mills and coal power stations would do double it. the cost of their products. Wait, and don't so do these it. industries that operate on very tight profit margins would go bankrupt. A very Getting tight the government profit. to pay for it seems logical, but a lot of state resources are actually tied well, up. The big stuff the would be fine, but like the little stuff would be fucked. Gas, which seems oh, yeah. counterintuitive, <laughs> but follows clear incentives. By artificially keeping fuel prices low, shipping and everyday goods are kept artificially cheap too, which has a major social impact on billions of people around the world. Pay people that more. Political lobbies and then charge more for transportation. <laughs> Pay people more. So I mean, hard to stop we can't afford things. Production. Pay them more. Meanwhile, very costly solutions for a far-off problem. Well, I mean, it makes like sense. People would put money back like into the economy. That's how that works. Nobody benefits mm -hmm. from it right now. Nobody benefits so from it right now. Well, can, can we pause it for a second then? The One, two, three, pause. All right, so, an, okay, like, we can do a little bit of reaction because we're, like, halfway through the video. Right, right? I just realized halfway um, through, like, how are we going to pause together? <laughs> uh, that, that we just did it. Uh, well, one of the things is, is, like, uh, again, uh, it makes sense that the majority of people would put money, of course, back into the economy because the majority of people do not participate in... Uh, certain types of financial activities that I guess people who are on the rich end usually do, you know, like investing, um, day trading, different forms of like, uh, saving money in order to gain money later. So like a lot of that money would just be going right back into the economy. Right. Not necessarily like the best thing. I'm just saying that because the majority of people don't engage in these types of activities. Um, I don't, it's, it's at least on my end. Cause I, I don't know much about the business aspect, but, it seems like it would only be a benefit, but again, those tight profit margins. Oh, that I think was are bullshit. I think you, uh, I think you missed a word there. It's the, the. It's not like the steel industry. It's the people relying on the steel industry. Like if you then, if you then put the the spurs to these people, they're gonna they're gonna well, put the, they're gonna push their numbers up, and then any smaller industry that relies on that is now. Uh, in the oh yeah 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 but but I'm saying I'm saying like that that sentence itself alone like yeah I believe that the tight profit margins are actually just like them <laughs> saying hey we have to make this because we want to make this you know like we need enough profits right we can't pay people more because we have an idea of what profit should be right right like which by the way if you have CEOs and stuff with so much money it's clearly inflated to some point. Um, right. the profit margins and the ideas about it. But I know, I 100% know that if you do that, it's going to it's going to kill other businesses. Uh, it's going to make it so people don't have as much access because they're not going to be willing to pay more people, like, more money, right? right. So all it's going to do is uh, it's going to make, make these products, I guess, fairly in their own right unusable to the majority of people. Um, and things things wouldn't get done. Right. Or at least they would on some level, something would happen because I don't like the argument that like everything will 100 percent grind to a halt, because even when we had uh, the several thousand, it feels like and this is one this is a totally hyperbole, uh, the the government shutdowns, you know, like, the, oh, yeah, the threats of government shutdowns, uh, things were still functioning for the average person. Right, but here's a lot the... of people did suffer, but like right. So, but the, the the fun with those the fun with those is like, it's government workers, soldiers, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. police, anyone anyone who's getting a, a yeah. government paycheck, that, except for Congress. Congress yes. was still getting paid. Well, the air. You remember the airlines? They make the legislation, so it's like, oh yeah, they took the massive handouts when they didn't yeah, need to do that. And one response is like, hey, maybe sell some of those seven forty sevens that you have sitting there doing nothing. Nothing. Well, but, you're but a business. The employees you're suffered a... quite a fucking bit during this whole COVID thing because, I mean, you can't make money with travel if did, people can't travel. You know what? Those bailouts they didn't really go to the employees where they no, should they didn't. One hundred percent, they didn't. They went to line people's pockets. 
Yes. Um, so yeah. it's like it, you're a business. So the only welfare I see here is corporate welfare, but corporate yeah. where cor- corporate wel- welfare is capitalism, where uh, general welfare is socialism. So that's that's mm-hmm. a whole that's 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 another. I mean, that's the that's again, it's when i when i boil an argument down when i get to that point where it's like where i get to late stage capitalism like i'm not wrong i know like i i'm sorry you guys have to hear the broken record that is me harping on a late stage but it seems like all of these things always come down to people don't want to do it because it's going to cost them money yeah or it's like we're all living in this like no one wants to do this because it doesn't affect them now but it's going to affect them soon and i mean like i i, well, I equated mm. it to like well the nazis didn't come for me well, you know, uh, I think we need to think about it a little more seriously than. Well, and I, th- I think it's actually, um, it's actually a perspective here because we, we spend so much time, of course, um, harping on ideas and concepts, but it's not that. It's it's the it's the the collection of individuals. It's the it's the the climate there. It's the culture of right. So, yeah. it's these people getting into these positions with people who already have been there passing on this culture of when you get there you act this way right or you should and then it it breeds it breeds greed right but, like I, so, I i can't say it's like capitalism itself it's the culture of the people who are doing right but it's it's capitalism it's right but capitalism is the tool that then does it like those people would be those people were in Soviet Russia, those people were the oligarchy. Those people yeah. were like, like they, they they took the idea of putting the uh, means of production into the the workers' hands, and then they're just like, well, we can profit off of this. We can find a way. Yeah. And uh, like when when uh, it wasn't Fidel, but uh, Che Guevara went to Moscow, he was sorely disappointed that communism wasn't working out at a large scale. He was very uh, uh, sickened by the, the 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 Bolsheviks, the the oligarchy. Taking him to fight nice dinners and lavish things. Because well, and... it was basically like like it was like, hey, for the for the revolution, comrade. But it yeah. was really just like you guys are the people we're fighting against. Yeah, you know, like yeah. Not, not, but we 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 can't. We're not we're not like staunch supporters of Che because Che was not. No, he was a monster. Uh, was not yeah, uh, at all. But still, and, like that's uh, that's the that's the poster child for it, and like mm-hmm. even even that guy was like, well, hey, this sucks. Um, well, and, and I mean, all of the all of them were, but like there were good, there were good parts to a, a, a good chunk of them. And the problem was, is that like, uh, people don't want to read between the lines, right? Like, yeah, and Castro, extract what was good. Castro wasn't that bad, but the day he came out as a communist, uh, that day they pulled their support for the Bay of Pigs. The Bay of mm-hmm. Pigs still happened. They still overthrew Cuba. And because we severed ties with them, we had the whole Cuban Missile Crisis. Whereas we could have just been like, "Hey, let's not cut you off," because yeah, like yeah. it's it's the thing with North Korea. Like, can we stop sanctioning these people? Because they're going to be bastards either way. You're just making all of their citizenship suffer because of it. Yeah. Like, can we can we like stop the sanctions and be like, "Hey, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like." It's like your shitty parent. Like, I, you're gonna get the mm-hmm. belt. Yeah. You're gonna get the belt. You're gonna get the belt. Like that, or you're gonna get the spoon, and it's like that. Did that make? Did that make anyone well adjusted ever? And then like we have we have uh, a couple people that I know are then apologetic for their parents beating them. I was bad. Like no one's that bad. No, no one's that bad. That like and and uh, remember we like I know it's a totally different topic, but fucking think about it. Think think about the mindset of a person doing that. Yeah, but like but Elliot, think about it. There's some you 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 have have put into creation this this living being who grows up in a state that is at least in majority in the early years controlled by you, right? Oh yeah. For the most part, and your reaction is um, a sense of entitlement, embarrassment, uh, your own problems being put onto this individual who does not have the autonomy to express and or protect themselves and and your your response is like everything has to come down to them having a bad attitude they're a fucking kid you know like i just don't yeah. i don't get it i but, don't get it like, but then we we do that exact same thing to north korea cuba uh anything oh, like yeah. Viet, vietnam a little bit worse 
a little bit worse to the Vietnamese. Well, uh, it's, and it's all and it's all for capitalism. And that's all like, well, we want. I mean, we I was want, talking about parenting, but you. I know, know, but I'm 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 making the analogy. You're extending where, like, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I say, it's it's that mindset extends, and uh, mm-hmm. like you were talking about the corporate mindset. Like this is another vile mindset that we're that's also then destroying the 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 planet like they're both terrible they're both systemic and they're both having a negative effect on the world because like all that conflict that conflict also pollutes a shit ton if our major export is war like tank production pollutes (laughs) like yeah yeah without a doubt fighter jets pollute all those those uh if 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 having like a, a a shipping barge like a diesel boat bringing all that like those fucking semi containers or whatever those storage containers mm-hmm. if that's like a city's worth of pollution or whatever imagine what like an aircraft carrier is is putting out I'm oh like, yeah yeah oh and, they're nuclear powered but i'm sure like yeah not all of it and also like uh everybody in chat feel free to react um this is like this is the community cast this is more about um our responses and, and our discussions with you because like this this would make for a really good um like one of one of our podcasts that we're oh, trying yeah. to do behind the scenes. Like this would definitely make for a good topic because right. we clearly have a lot to say on this, and we have two different ideas on how this works. Um, oh, you which you work get, together, but you get a you get a fifty percent. That's like fifty percent off. <laughs> it's like fifty percent. You no, get like, two um, ideas for the price of one. Yeah, so we, well, because because we have different we have different starting points when it comes to this, and and you you I mean most people who well, watch I mean, this already know like. My my point was like that the the meat industry does pollute, but it's nowhere near, it's it's nowhere near as bad as uh, it doesn't and that doesn't make it okay. But like no, get, well, get, yeah, yeah. getting rid of the meat industry altogether is not going to save the fucking world, and you can't get rid of it. It's not something like you can you can reform all of these things. Like you you have to reform them. You can't get rid of them. Uh, yeah. There's certain things you could get rid of, but like with lots and lots of work and effort but well like, and without but, without but, uh but the the meat industry thing that that's them then putting it onto you it's like because, yeah, yeah, because yeah. you're eating meat because you're feeding your family well, yeah, you're it's, the it's problem changing hands the responsibility right. so right? they attack the thing like uh, and they couldn't even get it right it's like it's methane burps not methane farts and like and they're not wasting all this water making a whopper like because the water gets urinated out and all this water makes it back into the water table or it makes mm-hmm. it partially into you, and then you make it back into the water table. Like it's not you're not you don't you don't destroy water. Like you can. Yeah, you, I know. <laughs> like, you can't destroy matter or me for serious. Like no. that's, that's the argument. Like it takes seven hundred liters to make a whopper, and yeah. I'm like, no, it fucking doesn't, man. Because most of like most of that water intake is they're counting the rain that made the grass grow. Yeah. Well. What the fuck? I mean, <laughs> bison and and sixty million bison would have ate that regardless, or our hundred yeah. million cattle. Like, fuck you. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I it's like looking at the the diet changes that we've had. Like, I mean, it it would be beneficial for to stop eating as much meat just for health reasons. But yeah, like but in in lieu of more vegetables, not of more grains. That's yeah, thing, yeah. Like... Well, well. I mean, honestly, if if I was gonna do any diet, I would probably focus on like a Japanese or uh, or a like uh, Okinawan like Japanese diet. That's more that's... along my line. If you're not at a deficit, that's fine. Uh, those people are very healthy as long as you're not also bogarting salt uh, and certain other things. You can get all yeah. the you can get all the nutrients you need out out of that. And if rice doesn't negatively impact you, sure. Yeah. But uh, it's if it, I'm at it like it, I just I watched another thing where it's like don't don't eat your starchy vegetables because like you 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 want to eat vegetables that are high in protein because they're also mm-hmm. low in carbohydrate but they're also high in fiber so it's like it's like spinach broccoli asparagus mushrooms that kind of stuff right all the shit I yeah. already eat all the shit like I'm already putting on my and like hey starchy like you don't have to get rid of starchy vegetables all the way but like. Uh, don't eat them as nearly as much as the other vegetables. The other vegetables you can eat as much mm-hmm. as you want, and like we don't have that conversation like in schools. We don't have that like, hey, don't eat your fucking this whole grain bread is not. The I think thing the, that's gonna the real conversation in school is like, hey, 
the cardboard pizzas here again. We love yep. it. Oh yeah. Can I cause... trade my Can I trade my Swiss cake roll? It's for, all. For it's all. That? It's all commodity, and it's yeah. like, yeah, we should feed our students the best thing we can get, but yes. we're not going to. We're going to feed them the cheapest thing. So then you're going to be like, well, this pizza crust is whole grain, and Congress says it's a vegetable when when yeah. tomato is a fruit. But okay. Yeah. Whole grain is not better than other grain. It's just different grain. Like, yeah, it's that's not a solution. Just like we put a little more effort, a little more money into that. Like, no, give them like some a solid protein and some solid leafy greens. I will argue that personally, and and maybe it's because I'm not like I absolutely love sweets, but I don't um, like in certain things. I don't like to put them in. Like, I'm not a big fan of white breads in comparison. I think that whole grains and like rice and pumpernickels just innately taste better. Oh, they do. And are more full bodied than your, you know, enriched white flour, sugar coated, you know, like yeah, the, the, I just think they taste better. Right, the whole the, the white bread was a was a answer to how do you stretch those grains. Yeah. And that's it. Like so you're spending more money on your whole grain, but it doesn't mean your whole grain is actually better. It's just less sugar. Well, it's less refined. Yeah. You're gonna it, have it, you're, it, you're gonna it's have a lot of moderation, right? right like you're, you're gonna have you're gonna have more nutrient value in it, which is mm -hmm. fine. But like if you're at a if you're at a deficit, like I am, you have to then cut all this shit out. But when I'm when I'm not at a deficit anymore, I'll put some of it back in. Yeah. In moderation, and then yeah. I'm really trying to teach my child moderation at the time too. Like she's like, she wants dessert every fucking meal, and I was the same way. And I hear that, and mm -hmm. it's like shit shit <laughs> that thing well, that I, I did think, i think back on like a well like i i agree with um i i still do agree with um uh shadow monsters roommate in the sense that like uh when it comes to, like feeding kids and stuff make first and foremost regardless of what the shit is in the schools like make sure the kids are fed yeah like uh because she's a teacher and it's kind of like it's very stressful to worry about trying to get the the right things to them when a good chunk of them are not getting anything to begin right. with. They're right? even they're even making us send her to school with a snack, which is nice yeah. because I can choose the snack sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've I've gotten her mom to like not buy terrible things, but she is getting a lot of fruit, and it's like she's already a little heavy. And if you're getting yeah. a lot of fruit when you're heavy, that's not a great thing. It's full of uh, it's full of uh, micro uh, micronutrients and vitamins and stuff, but. It's still a little much sugar when you need to get your macros in order. You you want to know how you know that like it can be bad in excess is when when the actual nature itself is like, hey, eat me. Oh yeah. I need you to eat me. I this is how to... I'm designed. I need <laughs> like, you. I need is... you to shit me out two miles away so another I, me can I need form. Another peach tree. <laughs> the peach tree just has two bulging eyes and it's right. fucking shaking. But that's, eat that's, me. That's that's one of my big arguments, and it's not my argument. It's an argument. It's like those those things that we that I would eat are the things that want you to eat them. Where the things where I don't eat are typically the things that don't want to be eaten, like grains. Well grains great because right. grains are wind wind pollination. Right. Like, you know, they like they it's... actively they actively inflame the guts of animals that eat them because they're mm -hmm. like, hey, don't eat this. Well I mean there are things that like birds are very special in the way that they get like birds and and certain right. insects are very special in the way that they can get away with a lot of shit right. like this and cows and they're cows designed can, for that cows can digest cellulose but it takes four stomachs to do so well and 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 I was I, I mentioned there was a bug uh, somebody asked for a bug fact like a week ago and I mentioned how um the reason that termites actually are able to break down cellulose is that they have a um enzyme that wow. lives in their hind end that actually like produces cellulose which wow. allows the sugars to be broken but the thing is is whenever they molt all of that enzyme go away so they actually have to consume the shit of their fellow compatriots <laughs> to replenish the enzyme because that's how hard it is to process cellulose that's awesome we're not made for it no, and then someone's going to be like, well, I put this enzyme in this thing, so now we can stretch our food. And it's like, well, that enzyme like also like makes you go turn purple or some shit. Like, Soylent, <laughs> now with cellulose producing power. <laughs> but like, it's, you it's, can eat wood. It's not like, people, it's people shit. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Could you imagine that? Now you can go up to your local cedar grove and just munch away. Oh my god. I mean, like, I would eat those gas station burritos and my dad's just like, you know that's just full of cellulose, right? I'm like, what? He's like, sawdust. I'm like, oh, pretty good sawdust. <laughs> I think about the Chris Porter. Did you not know talk about how sawdust in it? Hey, if I knew sawdust tasted like this, I'd be chopping wood every goddamn mm-hmm. day. So I think we got out of, off on a tangent. We did, we did. We were we, but, we, we went back to food because we, we we go back to music and food. But oh uh, right, but because that's those are two of the most important things. To yeah, us. important things in life to us. Uh, we uh, if anybody doesn't have any responses like currently to the video or whatever we're saying, we can get back into it and we can continue the reaction. Oh yeah. Um, but I know you... it's it's very lukewarm because uh, I think we're trying to absorb the information as opposed to be right. like, whoa, yeah, yeah. <laughs> holy shit. There's a like, lot of you know, like because we're, all... we're trying to listen. I've also <laughs> already watched this, but the they the, they have a great. I just want to compliment them real quick because they have a great style of like. These are the facts. I'm not going to hit you with the facts. I'm just gonna be like, hey, and then uh, the sun explodes, and like they just they just so, they're so matter of factly with it. And like, I mean, if you're if you're just coming in, the whole video is just saying this is what it is. Not if it, it feels like the video's purpose is to be like it's complex, guys. Right. And that's it. It's and not they, to be like we need to do blank. It's just kind of like right. This is and they what have it is. and like, they have a lot of videos on this subject and similar subjects. Yeah. Oh shit! I got. We gotta count it in. All right. Um, well, now I'm buffering. Awesome. What? Uh, okay. I, I have. Shit. Shit. <laughs> I want to ship it anyway. If it plays, click play. It's, it's going. Click play. All right. Should be even freer uh, without any the market should be even freer without any interventions or subsidies. Need what's referred to as degrowth. Fuck that. To cut back as a species overall. Degrowth. But the that, truth is, at least as of now, I love no when they use that that terminology. Job at degrowth is like a bear market thing. Right. If I recall. Bulking up, they call it a reverse diet. To figure this out and do eating, <laughs> eating, we must implement some degrowth. On dieting, not just to halt the release <laughs> reverse of diet. Degrowth. greenhouse gases, but also to start reducing the amount of CO2 in the air. It's too late to just mend our ways. We have to actively correct our past mistakes. With every year we waste, more extreme changes will be unavoidable. Okay, let's take a deep breath. Rapid climate change and the world we live in no, are good. complicated. So here we is already where took a breath. you, dear viewer, yeah, we took come a long in again. You could, could you please fix the climate? A narrative please. of our time is that we are all responsible for rapid climate change. That everyone needs to play their part. Why don't you buy a new electric car? Why don't you replace your gas stove with an electric one? Where the How fuck is you your Tesla? Your windows, stop eating meat and switch off your lights. Stop eating and Turn the lights off. To the average person, Dad you, called. Your lights are on. to do than solving problems. There's an extra bonus if solving rapid climate change sells a new product. If you don't have the money or time for these things, you should feel bad. It's an effective message because it's true. The Real bad. Way to feel bad. CO2 emissions would be if all rich populations on Earth drastically changed their lifestyles, and if the people on the rise would not seek to achieve it. Favoring the climate over comfort and wealth. If you're able to watch this video, that includes you. Me? Well, we've just witnessed a global experiment my in staying at home. Seven hundred dollar gaming PC. And consuming less during the coronavirus pandemic, and all it did was reduce CO2 emissions by seven percent for 2020. Asking average people to solve rapid climate change breaks down when we look at the scale of the problem. Personal contributions towards reducing greenhouse gas emissions are nice, but they are dwarfed by the systemic reality of global emissions. The concept of your personal carbon footprint was popularized by the oil producer BP in a 2005 ad campaign. Arguably one of the most effective and I promise not to dump that still seriously distracts all of <laughs> yep. us from the reality of the situation. If you eliminated 100% of your emissions for the rest of your life, you would save one second's worth of emissions from the global energy sector. Yay! The most yeah! Person it's not us! Make it <laughs> they make the things we, we buy that pollute! It's them! The scale of yep. And the lack of consensus over how to solve it, not saying you shouldn't try something, but still. 
It can cause decision right. fatigue you know. and moral licensing where you no longer feel bad because about it's the trying things that would make way. a demand for the things that don't. Oh yeah, this, oh that's such a real thing, Elliot. So long <laughs> where people make. just flip and so they're like, well, I guess I'm just gonna burn did. oil. Yep. There are many different takes, and they are. I see every time I see a Tesla, I roll coal. Right, so we can only offer you I block the, the chargers. Perspective and opinion. <laughs> opinion part. What can you actually? Is it going to tell us to just yell at people we like they always do? Way to think and talk about Basically, that's what we're doing now. An all-encompassing systemic approach. We need to yell at the people to do the, the things of our modern industrial which societies. hasn't really worked very well. In frustrating length, well, I'm hoping we can pull carbon out and make shit out of graphene. For systemic graphene for wire would be awesome. Politics and the economy of this magnitude, we need to influence the people at the levers. Politicians need to know and feel strongly that the people. No, we need to put people in there who already have this perspective. More AOC, a Congress the full of AOC. Politicians are reluctant to change laws that affect their biggest. I can already see the uh, the photoshopped donors. image to vote them out and vote of just a, a, a sea of AOC. <laughs> different pictures of like. No, it's an AOC SEA. Oh. An AOC. Time with things like banning plastic straws, Get it? By yeah. Food, transportation, and energy, while not forgetting the smaller ones like cement or construction. This thing about cement's cool. When industries fight against changing, we need ways, more. We need more Brad Neely's honest attempt to protect their own to make make to tiny little music videos about Bernie Sanders and his. of existing technologies and massively invest in innovation for the field where we don't wait, have wait, good wait, solutions Elliot. yet. There's no reason that the profit What's up, we pausing? Industries no, no, don't worry. The need to uh, reduce I was saying, is he based... As uh, are they saying... And if they still don't make it so the companies can see the profit. Need to force or bankrupt them. Uh, there's Incentives? This, there's this good part about... I don't know if you mentioned it yet, but... Quickly enough, because many low -carbon uh, concrete's like 8% of global pollution. Research, but, yeah, like, developing countries are built out of concrete. Will make more efficient mm, carbon capture yeah, yeah. Systems, tasty meat alternatives, we should make everything out of, um... And so on, if there's like, uh, no, actually, that's a bad idea. That's and definitely emissions-heavy. You can do your part by investing in these things right now while they're still expensive. No, I mean, these are the mechanisms uh, that will drive the prices down later on. The, the capitalistic so thing of uh, you can do. planned obsolescence ballot, and light bulbs, cars, and everything, wallet. electronics, that's massive. We need to start making things that last in the end, yeah. if we or are upgradable. The change we need, everybody will be unhappy about some aspect of it. Only if we all accept that some solutions will have... Oh, well, yeah. Well, for us, that, you can't, can you can't fix that, right? ...and make progress. Everybody will be a little unhappy, and that's okay. This is the best you can do. You can deal with the reality of the situation. That's and basically where I have to drag them along. Through your behavior oh, and your yeah. Actions. And while you do so, you can eat less meat, fly less, or get an electric car. Not because you should feel guilty if you don't, or because you naively believe that you alone can stop rapid climate change, but to do your... It's me, I'm sorry guys, I left the lights on. The it's me, it's me, I, I, I left the big light in the sky on, and I we've been the, suffering ever since. I left the water running and the backyard flooded. The personal blog of Bill Could you imagine? I also live in the Delta. Global health, climate change, and more. Check out GatesNotes.com to learn more about ways the world can work together Bill Gates. to reach zero greenhouse Bill Gates has problems, too. Oh, yeah. Um, and big problems. Of transparency, um, oh, yeah. Want to learn more about but here's the thing, like, uh... I... That's enough of that. Honestly, uh... That might be in this in this type of situation in economy, like, uh... I mean, if you live in the U.S. and whatnot, it's unfortunate, but I think that uh, investments show, like may do more than voting which may be like me overstepping but i honestly think that investments do more than voting <laughs> at this point given oh. our our situation like our our economy and our our government that if you put a heavy amount of money somewhere there's i ha i hate the idea that like uh innovation wouldn't happen uh, if if you know capitalism, which it would, there are people like. Do you think that um? Oh, innovation happens uh, in spite of. There's another curse. That's yeah. another in a in a nutshell. Innovation happens in spite of capitalism. It's from everything else that's non-capitalistic. Capitalism yeah. wants to sell you useless garbage from China that like goes on the top of a pen or yeah. like it's just. Whereas innovation is like somebody's like, I want to do the thing. 
I made a new heart valve out of like out of a 3D printer, or I do this, or uh, yeah. Capitalism wants to sell you insulin for seven hundred dollars a pop. But also, rampant uh, innovation, like outside of it, is still ridiculous. Like it can create the heart valves from 3D printing, right? But it also creates like those people who go out and 3D print guns, entirely functioning guns. From a 3D printer, you know, like just... Uh, you still need some metal, but... Okay. But here's the thing, like, it's still... Like, that's crazy. It, it'd be easy to find the metal for it anyways, like... Oh, yeah, that's easy, it's just like, there's the... And you can you can 3, 3D print some parts... And and yeah, yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't actually 3D print, like, a functioning gun. Um... But you know what my point is, like, clearly I overstepped there and didn't, you know add in the metal aspect but still you can make crazy shit i um, wish i could find the thing i don't know if it's an, in a nutshell but there was another like video or i think it was bread tube uh, it was i think it had to be on youtube but it had to be about um yeah that's capitalism stifles innovation it wants to sell you Moderate, like in oh, it, yeah. It, it wants to. I it found it. Second thought. It wants to sell you whatever, right? Like, and we have time to watch it. <laughs> we have time to watch it. This is this, this is episode. this is one of my favorite. I I love Second Thought. You guys could should go subscribe. Um. Well, maybe in maybe in this case, post the link on right there. And, uh, we'll I'm, just talk for now. Uh, there. Oh, um. Because it's only twelve minutes, and we got a little. Bit I know of time. it's twelve minutes, but I think about it. I'm like, I like, I like that added aspect of this community thing. But also, I, I really don't like that. Like we, 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 we like. I know we, we, we want to like absorb the thoughts and talk about the thoughts. But sometimes when we're, re I feel like when we were reacting to that video, it was more like just looking at two dudes be like, hmm. Yeah, and that's a lot of. But that's. I blame technology because we couldn't. I blame I blame the tech. We couldn't pause it for both of us. You're not gonna blame the average person. It's not their fault. Basically, like like it's not it's not poor people's fault that this is happening. Well, I mean, clearly it is, and we need to we need to eat the poor. We need to let them all uh, suffer and I, starve it's to death. So because clearly because yeah, exactly. clearly feudalism left us with no poor people. Yeah, it, it and 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 now that we don't have them anymore, now that they don't exist, it's just it's I mean, so hard to function these just, days. Capitalism calls for feudalism. It just does. It's been doing it. They well, in in any in any case, the haves to have more and the ha the, the have nots to have less. And in any like, case where you have a situation, you can't give a you can't have a society that works like that. You, where you yeah, eventually like having something it means nothing because you're so outnumbered by the have nots. Well, in, in, in any, like I was going to say in any case, when there is a system in which you have work and, and jobs and which the distance and not just pay, but in power between everybody is so like, there's such a large gap. You already breed it in every system you have, like just a factory alone, any other, any factory, I mean, I know there's a there's a lot of them are unionized, but let's just say if you don't have a union, it's literally just peons, mm -hmm. supervisors, CEOs, and people in offices, right? Like the gap between the power is intense. Most people are just working there temporarily, you know, right? Just just to make make a quick buck, or right? And they could be kicked anyways. Like I mean, a lot of these uh, the temp agencies, things we hear about Amazon and Tesla, which are new industry. Uh, they are mm -hmm. they, those are the biggest offenders in yeah. like human rights like in worker violations workers rights violations uh, Tesla included oh yeah it's terrible yeah I was gonna say I didn't know anything Tesla, about Tesla, Tesla I was has very a, aware of Amazon Tesla has a high accident rate and then if you if you like uh, try to get help for that accident or try to get like pay for that accident or anything uh, they will slowly slide, slide you away but that's an old strategy isn't uh, that isn't that crazy? Like it high, has high accident rates there, but it has like the highest safety ratings when it comes. To, like, oh, it just yeah. has high safety ratings, but not in the work site. Like, and, uh, and we all know about the piss bottles at Amazon. Yeah, it's like, and they're new industry, and they're like they're 
unregulated and they're like oh they're making so much money look at them because they're they're really scraping like they're they're they're, yeah. they're they're skimming off their employees a lot not just in in money but in like safety you know what would be a really good topic for for the podcast discussing whether or not because like uh i think about like uh playstation 5 and stuff uh, situations where there's not enough on the market to to beat the demand and oh. and Nintendo's done this too, where they've done them with the Switch and everything. When is it? When is it the right thing to do? And when is it just excess? Like Amazon has a good, a good, uh, like a terrible history of like tons of shit being. They tossed. destroy. Yeah, they destroy stuff to make a to make a uh, a want or whatever. Whereas other companies, I mean, I think in uh, PlayStation's case, it's more the fact that it's like the silicon it's shortage. harder to get. Yeah, which is different. But like, That's, I a... know that Nintendo has. It feels like they have a history. There are just there. I don't want to say I know, but I feel like they have a history of doing this on purpose. That like, or they like they don't understand the demand that there will be, and they don't make enough, or they know yeah. that there's going to be day one scalpers, and they mm-hmm. want that, which like, is possible. And like Nvidia knew, they were unable to get all the silicon needed, mm-hmm. and they they kind of knew this would happen, and they still went ahead with it. And it's like, and it's like that kind of stuff a playstation 5 goes online the mm-hmm. the new graphics card goes online and people are there in like in seconds le- microseconds with yeah bots basically ready buying them all just yeah. mass buying them i you need one you, you need one like that's it you need one that's one maybe one for your 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 christmas present for someone else but I, I like, would I would argue. So we have bots that buy. Like even if there's a limit, I'm gonna have a bunch of bots that are also yeah. gonna go buy it, and uh, that's and nonsense. The, and they and could that, skip the whole like and uh, we scalp it for triple the pl- the price. And they, they can were, skip the whole like who who how many units you were, can buy by like, developing other. Hey, the new PlayStation is yeah. like four hundred five hundred dollars depending on what model you get. There were thousand dollar PlayStations on eBay that day. Yeah. Well, I, I so would like, say that... So eBay should be like, hey, no, fuck yeah. you, we're not doing that. Any sort of retail, any sort of, like, second-hand... Like, they're not making a big profit on mm-hmm. it, right? They're not, yeah. like... what? Yeah, that's good. They're like, eBay's I, not making... They're not losing a lot by saying, hey, you don't scalp these things. Well, no, no. But then again, remember that, like, uh, it's also, like... In this case, it's not eBay's responsibility, unfortunately. It's, it's and we not. can't do anything. Like... Um, and I'm not I'm not promoting eBay, but like that's not in there. Like, uh, like it would be more on like what Sony could do. It would be more on like what direct retailers could do, right? Like, Oops. and they've already tried by limiting units. But if if you can just create a bot or a different account, they'd have to make it where you could only make in store purchases, and an individual themselves with an ID would have to come, and they'd have to like. Take, right. It'd be ridiculous. They'd have to take a photo and like they'd have to put them on a record. Like if they wanted to completely get rid of the shit. And, and right now, that, like, online buying is so gonna real. Be, there's gonna be bread lines for PlayStation's. Like yeah, well yeah, people camp out but, for but those it's things. Not a, it's also not a product that I could say that is like essential for this to happen. Because like again, it is a, is a form of entertainment. As much as I enjoy it, right. I would not want. I mean, I would not consider this that. I was a thing. I was gonna get one as soon as it came out, but then I'm like, yeah. uh, what kind of problems does the base model have? And it's like, it's always best to wait for the pro. Like, wait a few yeah. years. Uh, like I waited for God of War. Uh, mm-hmm. until we played. Like uh, Sam, let me play your PlayStation. I got a yeah. fucking three-year-old game for seventeen dollars. Nice. Yeah, I got a triple A title. And I got tons of enjoyment out of it, and I didn't like enjoy it less because it's three years old. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I didn't well, enjoy. It. I didn't like. I watched someone else play it, and I still wanted to play it. Like I watched someone else play The Witcher. Like these, the game is good enough that I still want to play it myself, even though well, I and know look at all these people in our community, these wonderful retro streamers. And oh all yeah, the people come up who are it's just. Like, like, I know how enjoy. Mario ends, and it doesn't fucking affect me one bit. It's like how seeing someone else's enjoyment or what they get from it, or like how they play differently. Well, and, and Dreamer's around because you're playing Chrono Cross. Oh, hell yeah. That was such a which weird... Is so, yeah, like... So you like... Just, and that was that was a weird, like, 13, 15-hour stream where it was like, hey, you're playing Chrono Cross? Well, I'll be here the whole time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's I'm what like, I'm saying. Fuck it's yeah. like, 
Um, you don't need to get the thing uh, day one or like even the first few months to actually still have it be enjoyable. Like the experience is mostly going to be ruined by the fact that the information available to us could if you're in if you're very worried about spoilers and all that stuff like it's so readily available that you could you could ruin something for yourself but i mean none of this information's shoved at you like for example like you know um god what's what's a good example of a a game that people have been waiting for that's just recently come out um on the PlayStation 5 i can't i can't remember i think that there's a new uh Spider-Man game that's coming out Oh, uh, what's that? Probably. So Aubrey needs a bigger, bigger water bottle. This one's just like oh, oh, right up her fucking alley. Just uh, a bunch of Polaroids of Baby Yoda. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I know of of Baby Yoda. Grogu. Um. What dumbest name ever? What, the dumbest, dumbest. What, 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 say his real name. Grogu. <laughs> Grogu. Grogu. <laughs> say my name. Oh my god! But uh, I highly, I highly uh, recommend this. Capitalism yeah, yeah, uh, does, does does capitalism really drive innovation? And I think we should probably just talk about it next week because it's something that like it's a big eye opener. I'm like, of course, like like d- wait, it's something you don't think about. It's something they they try to indoctrinate you with that like capitalism drives innovation when it fucking doesn't. Well, yeah, like, I mean, just look at the, I know it always goes back to this, because, like, again, uh, me and Ellie are really big music people, a lot of the people around here are as well, some are not, but um, we talk about it a lot, um, and, and like, just look at art fields in general, and music, like, most of the people, like, the stories you hear, at least, uh, again, in, like, I guess in the hip-hop community and stuff, it's a lot of people who just do it, you know, who just write their shit produce their shit and do it and they don't have a huge record label there's oh, not like yeah. a, a marketing campaign behind like, them like one, bedroom some, producers a lot of my favorite movies were someone just did it yeah exactly but it takes i mean that's there's a lot that goes into just doing it but we also uh, can't make a movie for a couple hundo now right i but mean I you mean, could you okay could. there's a lot you of could. cool shit shot on iphone i watched yes, a lot of cool true. iphone music videos and uh there's a lot of TV shows that are shot on iPhones and we don't even know it. Like, Well, and that's the thing. I guess I have to take that back because now that I think about it, it's more of knowing how to use your tools. Like um, this morning, like if we we're going to talk about stuff that we've been up to, shit. I was listening to um, I was listening to one of the major hip hop producers like talk about how he's been doing hip hop for like 30 years. And uh, Waves is like one of the biggest like uh, companies that does audio plugins. Uh, and they do audio plugins that are based on things like even the SSL and stuff, which was like a very famous like EQing machine that people used to use. And they make plugins that mimic this stuff. And you look at it, and and then you'll 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 watch his videos, and then you'll watch like the dude who produces stuff for Pharrell. You'll watch like Timberland, who is a major producer, and they're using a lot of the same plugins to accomplish similar goals. And, and if you look at the price on these individual plugins and you get them on sales and stuff, you have access to tools that these great, wonderful people are, are using and, and they're, they're passing their knowledge on to you. It's just well, if you want to go and search out that knowledge or not. There's you that. Know? There's that. But there's also like Glenn Fricker's idea, the, the guy, the angry metal guy. Uh, yeah. He's just like, hey, man. Metal music's all sounding, starting to sound the same. People are complaining about metal music sounding yeah. the same. It's like, because you're all using the same fucking plugins. Go, go do something different. Just mic, yeah, your, yeah. mic your shit, P- practice your shit, write good shit. Like it's on. Yeah. You- but but I mean that that can come down to that can come down to the writing of music before the production because you're not going to get past the science of what innately sounds good because frequencies will fuck with each other like, right but you don't talking you about also this. you also don't need like need those plugins in my in my opinion but you well can... it depends on what it depends on what you're you're working with like if, if oh, you're doing right. a rock band you could literally record in a room like i listen to nirvana demos and like green day demos and i'm totally fine with those like i'm, I'm like those oh, sound yeah. good to me but like, uh, i mean if you're doing you it, know where, where 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 are you where are you where yeah are the you? uh the the silver it's, box set. it's behind the tick <laughs> yes it's that's there. three cds of kurt's fucking uh tape recorder um, and him just going ah! 
God. <laughs> his his bedroom trash stuff that's wonderful. And there's some good shit in there. There's some yeah. I, there are cuts of songs that weren't released that they're the first mix that I prefer more than the the released song. And it's yeah. not just with Nirvana. There's a couple door song doors songs where it's like this was a better this was a better mastering. Yeah, yeah. This was so much better. This is a better arrangement for the song. Well, and and of course, yeah, you don't need any of that. Like it's just that like when I was listening to um what is his name? I think his name's Lou Diaz, um, who's been, like been in the business for like thirty years. He's produced stuff for like Jay Z and all that. And you like listen to it like it. It's changed over those thirty years, right? The way that they've done stuff, like uh, it's gone from one hundred percent like equipment and things in a studio to like you know uh, uh, digital tools like plugins and stuff. And um, a lot of stuff hasn't changed simply because like the science of it but i mean you know i don't want to um right there's that but like the 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 beatles were recorded on uh like a four a four track or an eight track yeah but like uh they they did a lot of studio wizardry to make it happen uh mm -hmm. but that, that that came from like knowledgeable producers one of my favorite bands ween yeah recorded on a portable four track portable yeah and they just record it onto fucking... I don't even know how it works. I'm assuming mm -hmm. it's like four tracks of tape and then it condenses into one. But then, like, I can you then go take other... Four, like, can you then layer and layer and layer just by, like, recording more onto it? I don't know how it works. But they were they were interviewed about it and they're like, yeah, it means, like, it means like less drum mics. It means, like, simpler arrangements for things. But their songs mm -hmm. don't sound like... They're, they're all... I, you, you can't you can't you can't knock any of their songs for production value yeah you can't knock a single one they all sound good they all sound sharp they all sound on it and it was just like they just knew how to they they they, they learned and they persevered a little bit of elbow grease and they made it like work like yeah if you're yeah. if you're a fan of the black keys they have this i forgot their name for it but it's like they've they got all the 80s like mid-grade recording stuff cheap so yeah. they don't call it lo-fi or hi-fi they call it like middle fidelity or like they call yeah. it like it's we know what we spent on it we know that it's not the best gear but it was all secondhand 80s shit and it's it, it and the black keys early albums they sound phenomenal because they knew or they they figured out what they were doing simple means spawn uh simple means spawns genius you're not wrong well and and i would argue that it's the same for even complexity it's just it's just the mind that's going into it. It isn't right. like just because we we made it with a washboard and uh, a oh, stick doesn't no, mean that you're super there's special. There's a lot of cause... cool shit coming out because those tools yeah. are available to kids. Yeah, exactly. Like um, that's but that's even so, like it's so but, but 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 if you think about it, like there's a lot of cool shit that comes out because of that cool shit was available to kids. Ween mm -hmm. was a bunch of kids in like '92. They got their hands on a four track. They got their hands yeah. on a piece of technology, and cool shit happened. Like, well, yeah, like, I they got, didn't, they I got didn't, my hands they didn't on need a, a big, DAW. They didn't need know? a big studio recording budget. They didn't like. I don't think they had a budget for no. any of their albums. Well, and that, that's part of the that's part of the wonder of plugins, right? Is that you don't have to hilariously um, buy a three thousand <laughs> dollars studio pack. Oh no! And like a an eight hundred dollar DAW to even start. Like there there are free versions of these DAWs, and there are free plugins. It's just your willingness to work with them right like um again you can ch you can choose what you want like um, uh, even listening to these people talk about the there's there's certain plugins i want now because i i know they taught me how to use them not because hey someone said they used it like i was listening to lou diaz and timberland and stuff use these for a specific purpose right. and i watched them do it it's a tool in my belt now that i want to practice with you know like I'm just we, we differ there too because I just I really value simplicity. Um, I just I mean, don't think it makes you it, it does it doesn't like I don't no, no, no. think it's that just, you're like no my, better because no, not you use the stick my, like my brain doesn't de like I I get bogged down with options. Yeah. Uh, you have you have the ability to go like to click every fucking tom tom and find out like this one this one I did it you spent five hours but it did it. But that's the producer mindset, right? right. For the I don't most have part, that. so know? like, with I play guitar and uh, I bought like a digital processor, 
Mm -hmm. And it's like, and you can go in and you could edit all your sounds and you can like, you can set it up, but then there's, there's no button to then like switch between them and call them up really quickly, but you can edit them. So you can, you can, you can just get every little bit perfectly with the the line six software. And I'm like, but there's no button to like have at least two or three of them. I would much rather just have like one pedal Mm -hmm. than all of that. You know what I mean? Like I'd rather just like have like one clon clone or like one fuzz pedal or like one little amp simulator in a box or whatever. Or you could be like you could be like Reggie Watts, who's just like, or hey, no, I've got all of the controls. Yeah, he's know. got like one one line six. He's got or a one boss loop machine. One boss and looper. He's got, yeah. And like he, he's and he's at the table with, with his like voice. I've seen him at the table with like dudes with like thousands of dollars of gear, tens of thousands of dollars of gear, mm-hmm. and he's just got his fucking looper and his mic, and he's got like another pedal. I don't remember what it does, but uh, yeah. And he's like. I don't want to say like it's not a competition, but he's no. not he's not slouching. He's not falling behind. He's yeah, yeah, doing he's the, doing the equipment isn't making like isn't isn't changing the fact that he's creating quality content. The, right? the like, things that things that he made are that much more endearing and that much more impressive because he's done it with so little. I think that's where that that comes from. And I'm not saying like overprocessed is bad at all. I'm just saying yeah. like. It's it's much more entertaining. Or it's much more like there's more dopamine, I guess, on tap because like well, and, because and, I went and, out with it depends a bow on and your an perspective, arrow. You know, right? Like when 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 I see people make uh, you know, amazing stuff with a with a ton of plugins and stuff, I just see an individual who knows how to use the oh, equipment. Yeah. Right. You know, like. But then, like, um, uh, I mean, like, what hip hop came out of? For, like, schools were underfunded. They didn't have musical instruments in schools. Uh, so they went home and they started making beats on their their parents' turntables. Like your mom's got a record player, and yeah. Then you, then you you get a microphone and a speaker and you start rapping, and you use your yeah. mind. That's now your instrument, right? Like that's mm-hmm. that's innovation through in spite of, uh, in spite of like someone saying no, you can't have this. You can't have oh, a music yeah. program in Brooklyn because and that's, uh, that's and that's money for that's black never people. been taken like away. You know, like. Um, I think uh, the only way something would be taken away 100% is if you were a musician or a so-called musician and everything was done and you didn't perform or do anything. Like, if you were just miming. Like, there's an element of you in all of it. Like, at some point. Like, there's no one going on... Well, and actually, even, let's... And let's even that, there are a few. You're wrong about that because I've seen some pretty shit sick air guitar uh, contests where they're just Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. They're so just that's miming. like its own thing, right? Like, uh... Right. Well, I, mean, I was going to say uh, Millie Vanilli and all that stuff. There were uh, groups that didn't do any of it. Um, oh, yeah. Millie Vanilli. Uh, that, yeah, they're not. At least, at least the boy band is singing, but uh, yeah. I just don't appreciate the vo- boy band where the sixth member is the manager who's this 40 year old dude and he's taking that cut too. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Like, fuck that guy. <laughs> those poor, uh, those I have poor not kids. I've seen Disney Soul, but I hear that it, it's pretty good. Um, oh, uh. I think Aubrey made me watch it. No, I don't. Wait. No, that's a different movie. It was a Black Santa movie. That's the one she made me watch. Uh, Coco's really good too. That was really Coco good. Coco was phenomenal. If you want to cry, go just <laughs> yeah, go watch Coco. Yeah, remember um, me, dude. Remember me, motherfucker. It's like yeah, remember. Your yeah, punishment remember is me? remember me. You remember you <laughs> like remember. But me. like this dude got like the worst. I'll I'll spoil Coco, but like. His okay, fucking Coco spoilers. His friend fucking stole all of his music and then killed him. And his fucking cunt of an ex-wife was like, "That shit had never came home." And it's like, let's fucking forget. Let's tear his fucking photo out of the book. And then like he's gonna he's gonna disappear in obscure uh, obscurity. Like I think there's more. I think there's more problem with like uh, her not giving any sort of reasonable doubt. You know what I yeah. mean? Like he comes like he's dead and he's still like groveling for forgiveness yeah but there was no his image wasn't anywhere if you think about it like right like there should have been something suspicious about that right because he was touring with oh his yeah and like there should have been and, some suspicion right and like the way like hey my husband wrote all these songs like in his song book over here like he's i heard him practicing these ones late at night and then like his friends just like nah man they'll all this shit's all mine <laughs> yeah like you're right. There's there are plot holes in this movie. Fuck Coco. And and then and then like and, and then this and then this guy comes up 
because because you know the kid thinks that he's like he's you're my like, grandpa That's my, my grandpa and then uh, suddenly after grandpa he's so excited that he has like this grandchild but right when he doesn't agree with him he's like i'm gonna kill my <laughs> grandchild too like he flips oh, yeah. the switch like i've done it before i'll do it again I'll do it again <laughs> like and guess what i'll I've do it when we're less. both already dead like, i've killed for less i'll re-kill you i'll make you disappear <laughs> great movie though it's a good one it's a good one but yeah, like there's a lot of people who enjoyed Cyberpunk. I've I've heard some uh, people really enjoy it, so it's like whatever, you know. Like I mean, I was uh, oh, I was asking if the, they patched the stuff, but like they were also promising like a bunch of extra story stuff. That's what yeah, I'm, that's the sad part. I guess. That's what I'm waiting for is like the extra. Like yeah, you can make the game run better, but like if there's no content to it, then it's it's just a well running like where people are like hey, the there are three factions. And the faction part is like the first five minutes, and then the end, like the game plays the exact same no matter who you went with. Hmm. That's like that's the stuff that bothers me. We're like, hey, you're, if you chose the 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 Mad Max type people, you're gonna be out in the desert for five minutes. If you chose the corporate people, you're gonna be in a big old office for five minutes. Uh. And you don't get to do like big corporate shit. Like you don't get to do like big like off road Mad Max shit. Uh, it's basically just like, well, I, I, as a former corporate asshole, I think that these numbers don't make no sense, Mason. You know, pop, like, pop, pop, pop. It's just dialogue. It's just flavor text. It's, it's just... <laughs> well, uh, Pigeon says, just like Marvel Avengers, there's no saving it. And I'm laughing because here's the thing. Because we've hyped there Marvel is no saving it. <laughs> so fucking much over these years with the films... Why? Why would anybody be surprised that like an Avengers movie or whatnot? Oh, did I get frozen? Why would anybody be surprised that it's a game that like is based on like things that are mostly in the movies now, is not great? Like that's been history in, yeah. in video games. Oh yeah, video game mo- movie games are always the worst. So and and even games that are based like on things that are you in need, the film industry you need, now. Anyway, you need a you need a video game that's based off a book. Those <laughs> yeah yeah those, you need like, a video game based off a book. The Witcher and, is fucking phenomenal. And then there's a show based off the book, but really off the game that's also phenomenal. And Spider Man was phenomenal because Spider Man was not like hey. This is this is the movie Marvel Avenger movie people like it's it can like, be its own thing yeah it's its own entity like it's you not, have to separate them like yeah the movie the movie Spider Man all three fr- Spider Man franchises and then the Miles Morales one uh, the only thing that overlaps in the video game is the Miles Morales Topher uh, uh, the first the first Raimi movies they got the games but like. I don't know. Number two was like the only video game movie that, or the the only ga- movie game that didn't suck. It wasn't based on the MCU, but here's the problem, pigeons. It was based on the thing that was in the limelight that everybody was loving on. Like, oh, so they wanted to not, pump out an Avengers thing. game. I'm not Chris Hemsworth, so like, fuck you. They wanted they wanted to pump out an Avengers game so people would eat it up. Not that there's any oh. problem with that, but like, I'm just saying, like, that's what they wanted. And then they also did loot kind of like you know equipment weird stuff but like uh oh, you know it became did they, did they, right did they monetize all the like did i don't just... know if they monetize did... it as much as like they made it where it's like you know you get the equipment that has the color that means it's rarer <laughs> they did the diablo thing but they did it in a non-diablo format so i'm i'm just now hearing about this uh but you just you did just mention i heard about diablo like the other day i'm there's, actually there's another one of them i'm actually kind right? of excited like... about diablo 2 <laughs> They remake. Oh, is it is it like a remake? Yeah, and like Full they remake? don't nice. they don't tell you that in the in the Twitch ads. It's just like it just looks like the original Diablo two ad, and you're like, okay, <laughs> like what? That thing's twenty. You're bringing years. it back. Well, and I would be hyped for a Wolverine game as well because that's it's not going to be like oh, hey, those a, were the fun a Logan ones. game comes out immediately after the movie. Like you know what I mean? It's, it's well, yeah, its like, those those movie games they always have like way less than. Where's this thing from the movie? Where's that thing? Because like. You need to really talk to the mm-hmm. uh, like the first the first game that really like Farmer's got it right. The first game where the the movie studio and the game studio really communicated was uh, Star Wars three, and that thing was dog shit. And they're like because <laughs> because the, they uh, eventually they realized like hey we're Lucas Films we're Lucas Arts we're making aspe- assets for the movie let's just use those assets in the game let's just go make really good assets for the game so it looked mm-hmm. good compared to everything the game still kind of sucked but 
Like, that was, like, the first thing that was, like, we're gonna synergize between these two houses, where, like, if they made a, yeah. Man- if they made a Mandalorian game, because that show was made in Unreal Engine, that game would be awesome. Yeah. Hands down. They've already made all the assets in Unreal Engine, and then they have it projected on a, not projected, but, like, massive TV screens that they're mm-hmm. acting against. Uh, and they just like, and then they have like the mocap go into the Unreal Engine where they're skinning it and all this shit real time. So then you can like see the scene back, and then you could go like you could go like edit it real quick, and like you could see the scenes. Seeing the scenes the same day or are massive for for movies and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mean it's like it's one of Kevin Smith's strong suits where he's like he edits the night after he filmed it. And then he shows mm-hmm. everybody in the morning. He's like, hey, this is what we did yesterday. I didn't get any sleep, but this is what we shot and this is what Instead we got. Instead of being like a bunch of a bunch of people like in 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 suits. Oh yeah. <laughs> just doing the shit. So like but, you, uh, the, the that kind of innovation, that's that's fucking sweet. Like I don't know, I'm just now I'm just rambling. No, I, no, I, I lost the point. <laughs> I lost the point. No, it's it's just that like it's like Farmer says, licensed movie games by major companies having to release within months of the movie release with idiot deadlines. They suck most of the time. That's why oh, like uh, yeah. that's can why we, like every single Nickelodeon game for the most can part we is not just have a deadline. Sad. Can we just get rid of deadlines? Because like, hey, like hey, give a give, give me about five years, but like we'll come well, in. If, if we'll you, come you in. You gotta and get audit. rid of the 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 fucked up poop butt mentality of like fans. Who are just like, dude? When's it coming? When's it coming? And you know what? Even oh, sometimes when they do, I want something finished. Like I yes, waited. I want how finished how as the well. fuck? How the fuck long did we wait for Final Fantasy VII? And like, I remember like five years ago, like, oh my god, in 2020 they might have a Final Fantasy game. And I'm like, or Final Fantasy VII remake. And I'm like, I didn't even hold my breath. But then yeah. t- the, it rolled around and it was real. And it's like, mm-hmm. good things come to those who wait. Yeah, I I fucking really enjoyed the first part personally. I don't like, I I don't know. I, I th- that's like one of those debates. Like that's one of those like dead horse, like beating a dead horse debate at this point. Like I've talked to so many people about it, and like there's just so many different. Actually, there's two opinions really. Die hard trilogy. Uh, one is I just didn't, I enjoy it. It's good. I like it. And then the other opinion is like the the company is making a terrible decision and they haven't released a full game and. Uh, like they're just beating everybody with nostalgia and stuff and that's who's buying it. and like i i have problems with that like i i have a different opinion than other people because when i played it it finally made midgar feel like a town that i gave a fuck about oh yeah you know uh, like that I didn't was massive care. that was massive and then when you go to the shinra building it's like it's been hyped it's been like and it's good it's like, a good place. It's sh- <laughs> that, that open, like like no like we uh, guys like there there might be like boilers. I mean we're not gonna talk about the story. We're gonna talk about the look of it. Is that <sighs> fair, Elliot? Sure. Like it looks so damn like I, good. When like you're you're waiting for like my favorite part of the game is coming up. How are they gonna How are they gonna make it look like you only fight one Hell House? You only fight yeah. one fucking Hell House, and it's one of the coolest <laughs> things in the fucking game. It's really cool. Like the in the in the okay, and then okay, I'm not gonna say the name of it, but in the in the the tr- the ghost train yard, right? There was a rare enemy, and it becomes a, a boss oh, instead shit. of like yeah, the, the dude, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the horse dude, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's like, the same thing they did sorry, with Hell House. Everybody, get the fuck out of here for spoilers. We just broke the whole thing. I said I wasn't gonna do it, but that's the same this, thing. This so, whole... so we that means from the next one, we can expect the serpent. We can expect uh, oh, yeah, more chocobo serpent. nonsense. Chocobo nonsense oh, is gonna make shit. me very happy. That's already a hard fight. All to of begin the, with. all of the weapons, all of the, uh, oh man, oh man, this is just gonna be great. Imagine, oh, no, no, imagine going into a swamp where like you're like you gotta run past the serpent, and in the first game it was like it's a two D thing on a two D thing, and you're it's running literally a and, snake <laughs> from like the, the, the and you're snake running game and you're running you. you're running into a hole in the mountain, right? And then you need that chocobo to get over it, so you don't like imagine what they're going to do with Dude, the swamp are they make and you chocobo dodge it with the chocobo. They're gonna Could you imagine they're like gonna a do chase something scene? like there's gonna be an actual oh. terrifying serpent that like I'm assuming like you're not gonna have to fight it, but I'm I'm assuming like they're they're gonna make you fight it, like you don't you know like. Yeah, instead of like get <laughs> run away from it. Yeah, but but it also has a, a if I recall, it also has a um, is it a, a move you can get from blue magic that's amazing? Oh yeah, it's got some really good loot. Th- yeah, well, there's a there's a thing if you can beat it early, like by cheesing it, you could get some good shit. But remember, it also respawns. 
Oh yeah. Well, that's a good <laughs> so spot to it's, like... it's a good spot to grind then. Um but just thinking about like the the showroom in the Shinra building, the oh, showroom with all of the cars and shit. That was so cool. And the motorcycles. Or like, like the original Shinra b- building is three floors. There's like it's eighty fucking floors, but like you're in the lobby, and then you're like you're like eighty floors up, and you get three floors there. Like this yeah. Shinra building was, you got the whole fucking build. You got the fucking men's room. <laughs> yeah, you got you got the men's room. You got the you duct got the system. janitor's closet. You got the cafeteria. You got the elevator. You got all the stairs. Oh my god. Was All there the was stairs. was there loot on the stairs in that one? Because I always went up the stairs for that extra loot. I think it was. I think uh, you gotta in go this up a case, lot of stairs. <laughs> yeah, I I hope, I I apologize to anybody's listening. I'm trying like we're just spoiling it at this point. Yeah. But like, um, no, because you can go the stairs or the elevator, and it changes like it just changes the Ooh. the situation. It's just like a different and the the um the night market. Oh yeah. It's so it's it breathes. It's living. There's oh, things going yeah. on. It's not just like, hey, you're gonna come over here and you're gonna try to get a wig. No, there's like a whole thing. And like and the the, the, the lecherous swine dude, oh he's great. Draw the set okay. The fucking... Okay, so so uh... <laughs> Give us like X's and O's. <laughs> like... So uh, it's uh it, it's uh, it's like uh, uh... And like that, and uh. There's too much glare! No! Damn it! <laughs> shadow monster, we need you! We need your shadowy. shadowy visage to. Oh my god. Well, that's sad. That's really sad. C- could you imagine just like it's like a stick figure but he's got you know, like the giant hair the and board. he puts on the dress guys he puts on the dress and and he's the most beautiful thing ever the board comes closer oh and i mean a dancing mini game oh my god also by the way if you didn't see it like i totally just drew uh like the well, stereotypical I mean, dick like so, i was just I like i mean i was a, i was a kid when I played the game, so I always went with like Aerith, but uh, Aerith, Aerith, whatever you wanna, whatever translation yeah. you're going with. But like, I was completely oblivious to like Cloud and Tifa's relationship because the game just like, it's just like, oh, they're they good. They made it a thing here. They're good friends. That's like, the game was like, they're, they're, they're good friends. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, I get it. I like, I thought, I thought like, she stuff. was, I thought she was like with Barrett and like that was their like weird kid. And I'm like, but that this like they they can spell out. There's so much nuance, and yes. now it's and now it's like the whole era thing. It's like well, that doesn't even that doesn't even make any sense. Like it's it's clearly Tifa. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, and here's here's another thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna like ramble about in this game. Like the fucking, uh, like the facial expressions, the way that they actually express themselves, is so amazing. It's so phenomenal. Like the way that they actually react to stuff. It's oh, not yeah. just like, uh, years of like Skyrim and shit. Working hard or hardly working. I and used I used to be away. an adventurer. And I know it's the tech, took an but arrow now to the knee. <laughs> I know it's the tech. Like, like that the whole but like, the whole orphan part. It's like eh, I could t- I could live without it, but it's then they turn it into a whole thing. Yeah. Oh my god! And they, they really they really really make you feel for the people of Sector Seven, uh, in the squat in the slums. So when Where the in... when the plate when the plate falls, spoilers, <laughs> it's fucking awful. It's just like I, 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 I'm fucking with Skyrim, but it's tech, right? It's tech. It's... I hate so much criticism about Skyrim. Like, like I haven't even I haven't even really played. I've watched people play oh, yeah. Skyrim. It's oh, not I have. my thing, but like, well, okay, um... but like they plugged it. Like this is the best looking thing ever, and you go back now, and it's like, what the fuck was this? This was the best looking thing ever. Like, look at uh, like, I... look how limited the UI is, or look at how like how immersive it is because the UI is not there all the time. And it's you like, know, well, I would well, argue look better the, than Skyrim. When, when the UI came up, it was like fucking Mattel. Like, oh my god. Here. What was better? Uh, playing Skyrim just... now makes me feel like I'm playing Oblivion. Um, like even when you mod the shit out of it to make it look good, it's still just like a lot of this. Like, like, just look at look at any stills 
from Killzone 3. That sh that came out on the launch of PlayStation 3. And that fucking game looks much better. What we got? You got a link for me? I, I was I was looking I was looking for like a specific image, but like I'm just gonna I'm just gonna um I'm just gonna do a regular search and then you can just look at the images and stuff. But here. I'll I'll put it I'll just put a regular Google search here. It's a huge link, but Okay, hey, you know that the worst dummies podcast is live? Uh, I didn't know. I was unaware. Ba, ba, da, ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba. This looks they good. Put so, they put so much work into Killzone 3. I loved that game. This looks really good. And this was the very beginning of the PS3 era. You know what looks... The very, it didn't, I don't even think it had... I don't even know if it was like... Wow. Maybe it was one of the first games that actually have trophies, but I can't remember if it had them. You know what looks really good? What? God of War. Oh, and, well, and you, you mean want, the new one? You, you want to know what looks really bad? Old God of War. <laughs> you, you know what? You know what? We're we're giving shit to everything, but like, it's all tech. I'm just saying that I need, the... Uh, <laughs> I need my giant billhook pen to write all this criticism I gotta down. write all these criticisms down. I, it's, it's not even a podcast about gaming, but we do gaming. But like, um... Oh, it's, part of, it's a podcast about life. Basically. Um... Guys, I burnt my dick with with some ramen. I don't give a shit. I st I, I stand Jesse. Like it makes you care about those characters. Oh my god! And then Jesse and Wedge and Biggs, like you. Yeah, care. because you know what's gonna happen. But you, but you also they have personalities. They're not right. just like we are but, on Operation uh, Dipstick. So Wedge, Wedge, like, they went with the voice actor who did Badger in a uh, um, Breaking Bad, and I mm -hmm. love that guy. I love the guy who played Brandon Mayhew. He's got that voice that only he can sound like this. He's he, he's a little bit like the Godfather, but nothing's really actually long, yeah. wrong with his voice. This is just how he sounds. He's, and they yeah they did make him so endearing. So like but but that makes it worse because like if you're a fan you know the fucking tower you comes know down. What's gonna happen, you know it's gonna happen. You know so it makes it even it hurts even worse. Like it's gonna hurt so much when they kill you guys, <laughs> and like you just have to deal with that. Like well, they really, also, they really make you care, and then you know. Are we gonna talk about how Biggs looks and sounds like Charlie Sheen? Uh, oh yeah, he's the, he's again <laughs> characters I didn't give a shit about. But but then again, I don't. I'm they, not riding on nostalgia with this game. I no no no. I'm saying like they seven as they much, did a you know? they did a good job. Like I didn't yeah. give a shit, and they made What's me up, KB? give a shit. Hopefully, you're doing well. We're talking about. The FF7 uh, uh, remake, because uh, eventually Charlie, everything we put. Hold up. It's Charlie Sheen and Ashton Kutcher had a baby. And But he sounds only like Charlie Sheen. What's up? Two and a half men. Two and a half men, yeah. It's two and a half men. That's two and a half men, the the video game. <laughs> Hopefully it's... doing okay, B. We're, uh, yeah, we're going over. We're just talking about how good it is regardless of the criticism. Like, Because uh, seven was of the three... There's criticism uh, for this game. My least favorite. What? There's criticism. Of course. No, like I haven't, I haven't heard any, but that's because I live under a rock. Well, I'm, 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 in, I'm in all these communities, and like gamers oh, yeah. have very heated opinions about. Oh God, look at, <laughs> look at this. This is also a very, very intimate love scene. Cloud looks like a like a really hot Icelandic chick. <laughs> <laughs> Cloud like just looks really good. They they all look really good. Uh, like, look, like, there's the comparison over there, Elliot, on the left. Oh, the one that got it just did, or no? Of the of the polygons to the to the new bigs. <laughs> they we, got we've it. We've come so fucking far. They captured it. Look how far. Oh, we've is come. it the it's box crazy. art? Yeah, they had like three. Yeah, yeah. They had so much different art. Like I remember, I remember, remember when you had a CD in your hands and you flipped mm -hmm. through the fucking manual when you couldn't play the game, and you learned every little thing from the fucking manual that you could because you can't play the game right now because Dad's watching the fucking Tigers. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. And I that. remember. And then also the art would look better, of course. Oh yeah, like, for sure. The book, but... but but you have the book art, and then you had the cinematic art with mm -hmm. uh, and then you had the game. <laughs> it's just like. And uh, I've 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 done a lot of modding to to Final Fantasy VII, and a lot of what they did is just they like took like we're just gonna take the the assets from the the cutscenes and stuff and try to make that 
and like yeah yeah and uh I just I you know I mean bottom line is I just I really enjoyed it 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 really breathed a lot like there's oh a lot of life God. in it now oh my yep <laughs> it, it, we got feet pics folks show feet even the cosplays just like no that's not a cosplay that's that's a rendering wait is that a cosplay it's still pretty good <laughs> it's like it's pretty good it's, <laughs> like, it's, the cosplay so look so good it looks like a rendering <laughs> I love the I love the pieces of armor though I really do. Oh yeah, it's just good stuff. But um, I don't know. We got on this tangent, but like, oh, is that like the, the the box art versions? Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I don't know. Hi I, KB. I would I would not say though. I agree. Uh, I would not say go out and and You're... buy it now. I would wait Tristan. to see what happens. Tristan, but... shut the fuck up, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you son no, of so true. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> It's it's one to one basically. You motherfucker! Now you're not you're not gonna unhear it or unsee it. It's I'm just not Charlie gonna. Sheen. <laughs> Big it's Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen and Final I'm Fantasy. Gonna, I'm gonna buy that game when it goes on sale, and that's all I'm gonna think about. It's Charlie no, Sheen trying to take down Shinra. You haven't heard Shinra. his voice yet. Oh, I've heard it. I've watched people play. I just don't remember his voice. I remember everybody okay. but Bigs. You're gonna scream out. You're gonna be like, "Fuck you, Tristan! It's just <laughs> Charlie Sheen." <laughs> Oh man, I would love a nine. Uh, we can skip eight, but I would love if they if they. Oh, give that there's too much a nine. lot of there's a like I've <laughs> there's some contention about nine being remade. I want it because <clears throat> I'm gonna admit this whatever, one is a nostalgia. Whatever instrument they use to make the theme song and the interstitial music, nostalgia. whatever whatever like whatever machine they use to make the interstitial music on Rugrats that yeah. they, they used for Final Fantasy IX, they can't change that for the soundtrack. I have to think Rugrats cutscene every time I listen to the Nine. Yeah. Isn't that weird <laughs> where you hear, like, you hear, like, the same kind of, like, Casio MIDI nonsense, and you're like, oh, they use the same sample thing in another... <laughs> I don't know. I, the music was really good for Nine. Oh, it was like... wonderful. It was wonderful, but, like, the technology was limited. And it's the yeah. same shit they used in, like, Nickelodeon. So then when you hear the... You hear the sound back to back. You're like, it's the instrument, but it's, yeah. it's, but it's in a different, it's in a different setting, right? And the complete, like, but but hearing like I, well, I can never, I cannot not think Rugrats when I watch you play Final Fantasy IX, because there's like one little piece of the score that has like uh the 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 intro for not the intro but like the you know where the title card plays it goes like baba yeah. Yeah, like there's like I'm little... trying to think of what piece of music that would be. Oh my god, I'm I'm gonna get, I'm gonna take it down from like Rugrats. Well, well, I mean, here's the thing, like, uh, what, where was I when it plays? It's just it's just in the music. It's in like it's all over Final Fantasy IX where they use the same like sample setting or something. Uh, yeah. I, also... All I'm, all I'm gonna find are the theme songs, but it's like it's the actual like episode sounds. Uh. Where it just it sounds like they sampled the guy who played Stu, and then they like they just modulated it. <laughs> modulated Stu. Oh God, it does. I'm confused okay. about <laughs> the connections with Rugrats and Charlie Sheen in the Final Fantasy. Level. It's so fine. So it, it all goes back to 1999. No, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go watch Rugrats, and I'll pull out the exact piece that so, I'm. So, so KB, basically. We were talking about the Final Fantasy VII remake. We were going off about how much we love it, and we don't really get the arguments against it because we're not really—we didn't go really into the whole like money arguments. side of it. There are huge, there are huge arguments, and they're mostly just people who and and I'm I don't want to oversimplify them, but a lot of the arguments come down to they didn't get we're, the whole game. We're, we're very irritated that it, it's that it's not a full game because what was expected was that it was the entirety of Final Fantasy VII remade on one disc at the same time for the same price point that's what was expected and because we've had so many situations I mean... where games have been split or unfinished or dlc has been involved and then also they decided to make that dlc that was only but, available on five which but, was was a, a dick move it's but, like the hobbit it's like instead of one game you get three games <laughs> like I, yeah i mean i'm 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 actually happy that it's three games because that means that you get one game per each disc essentially that, that when that game came out it was three discs mm -hmm. because it was like three games worth of content 
Yeah. Like that's oh well, like PlayStation started doing that thing like we don't we can't fit it onto one disc so now it's two we can't yeah. fit so now it's three that was like the only thing that did that like maybe a PC game would have two install discs well, and, but... and, and let's not kid ourselves the final disc on all three of those Final Fantasies was just them shitting the final dungeon ending stuff into one disc that's all that was. It right, was just the end stuff. You're going like, to get so much more world building. I just, I really yeah. hope that, like, okay, well, you can't go back to Midgar, but I really hope that this surrounding world is as, as big and lively. Because it feels, it feels to me like they're going to make the world a yeah. lot smaller. Because the, the amount of... It probably will. The amount that they put into Midgar, like, if they're going to do that for every part of the world, the world in FF7 is pretty big. But 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 again, we gotta we gotta recall that no city even comes close to matching Midgar. Though right. you'll probably get actual towns and, and and stuff like things that are not big. I would say maybe no world map. I mean, I maybe. I might even be okay with that. I'd I don't, same same. If one, I, just... I mean, maybe I've had it with the sandbox format. I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm not mad with because it, it's like, well, you go get on this thing, and then they just take you to the next place. And then, yeah. well, you you want to go back? Well, you go back to that thing, and they go to the thing again. Like, it, well, because like, I mean, cause... Final Fantasy X was such a good Final Fantasy, but it lets you just go to segments. <clears throat> it's not a world map, right? It's it's segments. Like, Mount Gagazette is a different place, and Besed's a different place. And when you get on the oh, airship, yeah. you choose an area. I'm not mad. At, I'm not mad at Final Fantasy X for doing that, because like a lot of my frustration as a kid was being on the world map where I'm constantly running into fights and I'm looking mm-hmm. for that thing. I'm trying to find that thing with my kid brain, right? And, and I don't know where that your kid fucking brain thing. Didn't went. read the old man saying, "Go to the fucking cave," mm-hmm. and you don't know where to go now because <laughs> you didn't. You're like, "Oh, skip, skip, yeah, yeah. skip, skip." I couldn't. Oh my god. And now I'm like, now I'm suffering for it because I was a dipshit. And now I'm just, I'm gonna fight these fucking guys with the fucking monkey bar, my motorcycle, sons of bitches. It's just, yeah. Uh, I, my 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 major argument is about all of this stuff happening. I guess I can just sum it up. I do not want a game to be remade where it just looks like a pretty version of what it was before. That yeah. is that there was so much that everybody had to cut because of tech re- reasons but of not having the technology there was so much in stories mm-hmm. so many things that people imagined their head that could not be done because unfortunately the playstation was not a powerhouse so we're at this point where they can explore it and there's a lot of nostalgia and people don't want you to explore it because they want to replay the game but it's pretty and i and there's some people who who would argue that it's not just that it's like they they want the changes just to be like you know, quality of life stuff. But I don't think that's going far enough when you have such a wonderful world that someone's created in their head. So like, you want it to breathe. What remakes did we have? What actual remakes did we have that were really good? Because I can't even think of... I can't even think of remakes, but... Yeah, because most are just remastered. But, like, I um, want I want a remake of, like, Morrowind and Oblivion and Skyrim, and I want you to be able to just go through things. But I think... I don't know. They, did they just end up doing that with the Elder Scrolls well, Online? They... Well, they did. They did remakes of, um, uh, and I, I'm not aware, but they did remakes of Crash Bandicoot. But if I recall, those are just oh, it's the same game. Super remasters. It's yeah. the game, same game, but Spyro, like, Spyro, Crash, um, all that. Uh, I want. I want. I want somebody. Ratchet I wish somebody Clank. was in here. Ratchet and Clank. What? They did one. It was the same game. Oh, I think no, the new Ratchet and Clank one is a. No, game. I'm thinking Jack and Dexter. Jack, Jack and Dexter was the same game, just remade. The Reloaded, I can't remember. I thought I thought there was like a a remake of it, but maybe there wasn't. Um, where's where's a what what can anyone think of a remake that was like this is just a new game? Like, I uh, mean, well, they so do, far Final Fantasy VII's a good they, example. They, they but, do that with Mario like every year, but but that's like that's a that's a new game. It's just a new game, like not like you know they didn't go. Uh, Super Mario um, Lost Levels. Well, I think they did. Know. Like, I think they did some of the original levels in 3D. Uh, was that when they did uh, Super Mario World 3D? Like, they did some like callbacks, or I can't. Yeah, remember. they, they, they would have had. Uh, there's a lot of levels there, so there would have been some callbacks. But this is something that Three Up Moon might know. <laughs> Sonic keeps getting like. So I remember there was a period where like Sonic just kept getting like re like. This is Flash Sonic too, like. You can you this can have the Sonic you, with the sword. This you can is have Sonic the, and he's a werewolf. You can have the Green Hill Zone and a million different things and they didn't make it better that it's three D now. 
Yeah. Green well, Hill. I mean, I think I think they did Mania, which is just like an upgraded Sonic, extended content. Sonic right? and the Black Knight was a piece of shit. That's one of the few games that I also played that Game Grumps played that they're like, this game fucking sucks. And I rented it for the Wii and I'm like, oh, I rented it as a joke. I'm like, what? I rented it for the Wii as a joke. That's like almost like a double... Don't oh, yeah. whammy there. And this but was like, like, the Wii had been out for a while. I think the Wii U was probably out by now. And I'm just yeah. like, Sonic and the Black Knight, and I'm going to rent it from my local grocery store. Yup. <laughs> and it was B.A.D. bad. It was so. real bad. I I don't know. I, I want to see... I, I want to hear somebody's argument of why they should remake a game and it literally be a one-to-one that's prettier. Is it because they want people to experience the same exact story, but like it's updated enough that people are willing to play it who have not played games in the past? Because I f- I don't know if anybody I mean, has this argument, but can, I feel can, like it could. Be. It's like it's like remastering a movie, or not remastering, but like remaking a movie, rebooting a movie. It's even easier than rebooting a movie because it's like we just took the game and then like put the assets on the new engine and made it look good, and it's the same game, and now we can sell it again. Because takes... I would I would hate for a one to one on on nine because I feel like I, I really enjoyed nine but there's so much more they could have done with all of that world right yeah like, but nine is so much nine is massive so that would it have is. that would have to be three games could you imagine Lindblum oh yeah now like you actually the districts are huge there's things going on oh my in them. god because that like, that, that game would be crazy. nine was so much bigger wasn't that four discs. It was four discs, and the fourth disc was basically just the end. But it was three discs of content. There's so much more. There was so much more game there than Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Uh, I want the tree that I hate because I get stuck on the tree every time. I'm just like, oh, uh, the the Eva want, tree. Like, let me just do more stuff with the tree. And like, it's getting attacked. I'm like, I wasn't done here. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't done. You don't get to just attack. That was one of the plot problems. Like where it was just instant. Oh yeah, Alexandria Treno. Oh, Treno's gonna be great. Treno is like it's Treno has to be like a take on Reno, like going to Reno. Going to going to the Reno Art Gala. Uh I wanna see what the flaming amaranth or aramat or whatever the fuck. Oh his yeah, name is. I would like to see him him have way more involvement. Oh yeah. Um because that's one of the the problems is that like uh people people complain about his character because he basically is just like a dude who's been who has been yeah. slighted by Zidane and he changes his opinion because the Dane is actually somewhat decent of a person in certain I mean, cases. But then, like again, it's with Final Fantasy VII. I can't wait to see what all the other characters are like. Like Vincent. How the fuck are they gonna do, Kate? Kate Sith. How are they Kat- gonna fight with Vincent? Is he gonna take over the whole entire battle? Because like he turns into a fucking monster. He would be like a summon, basically. Like he turns yeah. into four monsters. He turns into a, yeah. a chainsaw Jason monster. He turns. He turns into. Uh, Frankenstein, he turns into a behemoth, he turns into well, the like, devil. There's so he many of those into, those characters uh, are so niche, like to to give them the their just due, it's yeah. gonna be like you they didn't even let you fight with Red Thirteen. Which yeah, was, a lot of people a lot of a lot of people were mad about you don't you couldn't control Red Thirteen. But but I know why they did it. It was the very end. Right. And I feel like he's just gonna come in as a, a as a playable character right. in the next game. If he doesn't, that's the mistake. But then like when that's they, gonna be a heavy one. They, that that's a massive problem with these with these RPGs with like that many characters. Mm-hmm. Like I'd like they're gonna they're if they I think they'd probably like leave all of Yuffie's stuff out completely because like she was such a one note. Well, well they they added she was in the DLC. It was a site. Oh, what? Yeah. There's DLC? And the DLC was only for PlayStation 5. That's why they fucked up. They they pulled a shit move. I agree with people on this. Okay, they I didn't made know DLC. that shit. Yeah, that's bullshit. Like I totally agree with people on that. Like I'm not going to defend like I'm literally defending the integrity of the creators on the game. I don't the company can, can can suck a fuck. I don't <laughs> You know, like shit. Tell me that again. <laughs> Tell me that what? information one more time. Uh, I was saying that basically, they put the DLC out and it was only available on uh, PlayStation Five, so the people who got four could not engage in the DLC. There, and they didn't have the re- record scratch ready. <laughs> yeah, well, and I'm also saying like, I'm I'm defending the game as a game, 
the company, Square Enix is is absolute shite. Like they fucked up so much, oh. and they continue to do stuff. I'm not going to defend them. I'm defending I mean, the fact that I don't know, these I was, people made a beautiful thing. I was bummed you know? when like 11 and 14 came out because like I really oh that sounds great that you get the full like the full world and it's an MMO blah 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 and, like oh it's 14 bucks a month and I'm like uh, fuck you. Well, and, you have to I, admit, and I never got to play 14's those. 14's content, they keep going. They're like really on it. I never got um, to play. Well, yeah, because they want to. They want something to compete with WoW. Like Sam's just like, hey, mm-hmm. if you could, uh, uh, all I want for my birthday is my 14 subscription, and I'm like, easy peasy. Fuck, just slams on table. <laughs> Does she play 14? I believe so. What? What? F- is is there another one? Is it online or? Is well, it there's only there's only 14 because I think 11. Like I I think you can still wait. I don't know if they shut the servers down for 11. I don't know. Probably. But Sam. You play Final Fantasy fourteen, correct? Yeah, online. Okay, yeah, yes. I like that was a good I think that was a good move on their part. Um because people want to experience Final Fantasy uh, like expanding and you can't get that on the stories, right? You're gonna get a section of a Final Fantasy. You're not gonna get like a realm. Ow. So Um although I like I like Final Fantasy X two. I don't give a shit. Um, I think it's a good game. I like the fact that I get to see the same world for a different reason. You um, know, like so. I got Final Fantasy X and X two. You got uh, the the remaster like HD collection or whatever. Yeah, I got them, and I got all the way through. Um, I got all the way through ten, I think, uh, or most of the way. Mm-hmm. I eventually turned the cheat thing on because I saw it was available, and I'm like, I just kind of just want to experience the game. Um, yeah. I did. I tried to do the lightning dodge. I tried to do all the things. Uh, it was. It was. It was. A, it was nuts. I got pretty far, and then I'm like, mm-hmm. "Hey, let's check out Ten Two. And like immediately, Ten Two there was like a different system with the combat. And I'm yeah. like, and I'm like, what? I didn't like it. And I'm like, what is? What's this? We- like, this new combat system sucks. And then I just never played it again. It's such a. I. It's such a good combat system. It's based. It's a class system, basically. Well, I mean, uh, like, which is what a, a Final Fantasy had a lot of. There was like the UI. I just didn't like the UI, and it's like click yeah. this little sub menu and do this thing, and I'm like, what? Well, when when I first played ten, when I when like it came out and stuff, I was not good at the uh, uh, auto defend, the oh, switching yeah. menus, like switching your weapons constantly, switching your characters. I did none of that, and it made it really hard. Right. But it's actually really simple. <laughs> Because I was okay again. I was a smooth brain child when eight came out. Well, I say yeah. <laughs> there was like there's like there's a move you can do with uh uh, what's the guy, it's, it's fucking. What's what's the fucking Trent Reznor looking motherfucker, in eight, uh I've already forgot his name. Uh, you mean Squall? Squall, yeah. Oh, what a dumb name. Uh, so Squall, <laughs> Ka- Kajagugu I there. I love eight. Uh. I- He's got the gun blade. I could never get the combo thing to work. Because oh, you just... could never get where you would fire on attack? Yeah. I'm like, there's yeah, a... yeah. You it's hit just, the uh, it's just I'm hitting. Like... Well, I'm like, yeah. I could never get the timing right because I was a smooth brain kid. And I'm like, I just fucking whatever. And then, like, okay, so I got stuck on the first boss fight because I didn't understand the mechanics of, like, oh, they want me to run away. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean like uh, you mean after you get like Ifrit and stuff, and you go to like yeah, you go, you go, freaked. You go to that uh, island, and then you fight like a, me- a me- me- mechanical freaked. Guga. You fight a big old mechanical Guga, and it's like you gotta run back to the boat. And I'm like, well, I'm fighting it, and like the timer goes down, and like they. Oh they, yeah, that I was just I rough just, as a kid. Anyways. I just didn't understand that like this is an un- unwinnable fight. I didn't understand what those were. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you could. I don't think you can actually destroy it. Right, um, and so I just got stuck fighting it, and I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to run? Like, if someone would have just told me, run away, like, and I'm sure the screen's, like, prompting you, like, hit, hit L and R and do the thing. Well, well, and also, like, the also like the thing we we dismiss the most when you're really young <laughs> is the dialogue, and the dialogue's like, dude, we can't, we can't win, we gotta get back to the boat, and us, us like, is like, it's time to fight a thing. <laughs> dude, I, that means, that means I got, like, fucking 10 minutes to beat the shit out of it that's what that means <laughs> exactly that's what the, that that's what they did with the first like with seven i say the first game but for me that was the first game yeah uh, my, my first game was actually the first one right a lot of people a lot of people a lot of americans the first game is six uh that they got yeah, yeah that makes sense in our age. mine's just because of super nintendo right. and like having a cousin who's like dude i have the originals and i'm like you my do. parents love me this much <laughs> 
Oh man, my well, cousin my cousin had fucking Japanese uh, uh Pokemon Green. My my cousins had oh, Pokemon geez. Green when like that was when like yellow and shit were out. I'm like, what? And it's like it's it, in, it all makes sense. It's in Japanese. And I'm like, if I tell you if I tell you that th- this will make it make sense. My cousin was an only child. Does that Oh yep. <laughs> yep. Where, oh, where yeah. it's just like they have ten thousand things to keep them busy. My other co- like it was yeah, my other cousin who we, we hung out all together, he was the only child and he had uh, he had fucking Nintendo, Super Nintendo, N sixty four, and like I yeah. wasn't allowed to play with any of them and I'm like, What what? I wanna play Toy Story too, so bad. <laughs> So bad. Okay, I'm gonna be the guy. I gotta. I gotta fucking. Yeah, we we got a blitz, guys. Uh, he's, I gotta he's go. Gotta go pick up his kid, and then uh, I o'clock. gotta. I gotta do music. Production. I got another half an hour, but I gotta beat traffic. Yeah, just do it. Just do it. Uh, we've been going for an extra hour today, so that's good. Yeah, that was a fun one. It was. It was a good one. I know we went on a rant with that. Like seriously, you guys, all have opinions on it. It's totally fine. Like if we... you if you don't stop start fighting climate change, it's all your fault gonna eat Thank yeah you for yeah the stream, guys. Uh, if you don't like final Fantasy seven hey if you, i no. heard that <laughs> i heard that gmf quit his job just so he could watch us every time and i i really hope that's bullshit yeah i hope that's bullshit too <laughs> but yeah get some food thank you so much for being here everybody uh kb eli burning pigeons farmer uh, oh, yeah. dreamer was here for a bit um all the people oh, yeah. who are lurking as well thank you so much for being here uh i know we do we go really hard in the paint with some stuff, but like, yeah. I figured I quit my job so I could catch every stream. Like, that's not true. If <laughs> no. you, if that was the case, uh, we would hire you and you'd I was be a fired. mod. By of now. course, I didn't quit my like, job. I was fired. <laughs> I was fired. <laughs> okay, guys, be excellent to each other. All right, please. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.